Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, Tyvis Powell, Jason Lloyd. Plus, ba da 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 you're loving him, Mikey McNuggets. And so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show starts now. Booyah! All right, folks. I got, we got nothing to say. We just have to figure out why Tyvis <laughs> is wearing his I just turned glasses. and looked at Tyvis. And Thank now you. He's what is happening here? So, just put those first on. First of all, I, today is dedicated to Director Steve. It is his 200th birthday today. So I wanted to take the time out to show my support to him by putting on these glasses to showcase that, hey, it's not everything you do is bad, okay? You know, you got, this is your idea, and I'm cool with that, and I support what you do. So, this is my support, and I just wanted to wish you a happy 200th birthday. Here's the 201, Director Steve. Is today <laughs> Steve's birthday? Actually, is Director Steve's birthday. So How do we not know that? Steve, I had no idea. Happy birthday, Steve. How do we not know that it's Director Steve's birthday? That's a bad job out of you, Mike. Uh, well, usually direct, uh, EP Steve texts us and tells us it's That's a bad birthday. job out of EP Steve. He texts me. That's how I know. Did he text all of us? I don't know. Where did you get those I think glasses? he texted the production team yesterday. So when I, did, I did not get that text. So when I did the... He only uh, texted Tyvus. When we did the Buckeye Cruise this past uh, year, it was... Uh, what's his name? Jimmy Buffett? Is that the yeah, dude yeah, from yeah. Margaritaville? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he we just had, die? Yeah, we had a day dedicated to him, and they was giving out these glasses, so... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, what happens? Can I see him for a second? If you go like this? Yeah. What yeah. happens if you wear well, it like is that? This is more like, this is more Steve's role. Right? <laughs> this is more Steve stuff. I should I probably should have rocked him like this. Yeah. So, oh. yeah. I just wanted I, to I think that means something a little different. Yeah, they're very different. I feel like that, like, if you smoke a lot of pot, you wear them that way. No. Uh, no? Yeah. No! Oh! <laughs> I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Delayed reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so shout out to Steve. I said I wear these. I told EP. I told uh, Steve Becker that I rock these in honor. Nice, of Director Steve. Today, Steve, how old are you today? Two hundred. Sixty-two. Sixty-two. Well, happy birthday! What are you doing, Steve? You doing you, Steve, you look every bit of sixty-two. Too. Yeah. I'm just telling you that right now. You do every bit of sixty-two. Pretty harsh. Steve, what are you doing for your birthday? Anything? I, I've got to go see my mom today like I do every Thursday and, and have a, a video chat with my family and, and then go out to dinner later tonight. And uh, I, I do owe, Tyvis, I do owe you an apology. Uh, I'm, I'm very touched right now by what you're doing and stuff like that. You know, last week we did the our uh, keep cut trade uh, game. And I said something that was, I think, a little out of line on that. I want to apologize to you about that. Um, you know, that game is based on a real <coughs> game where you, you know, kill, marry, and then other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I went a little over the line on that, and I said that, uh, you know, I said that I would cut you. I apologize for that. I should not have said that I was going to cut you, but I stand by everything else. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Your apology, I don't accept your apology. You made your decision. Like John Moran says, stay on that side over there. You stay where you at. You can't come back over here. You want to be in the same boat with John Moran, though? He's rich. Mm. All right. But there's a lot of rich people that are... He's the, is he a, most of them do is he a bad human being? I don't think he is. I don't think he is. Yeah, I just think he's caught up in... Yes. Young yes. guns, young all that stuff. Like he's mm. young and immature. Yeah, that's all. He's that immature. Is. He's not bad. <laughs> yeah. It's time to grow up. I, I mean, every, every time you, you know. Anyway, uh, so happy birthday to Steve, sixty-two. Where are you going for dinner? Anywhere good? Uh, I hope. I don't know. It's a surprise. Surprise, surprise dinner. Uh, birthday dinner. All right, that's a failure by Steve Becker for not letting us know. Besides Titus, at the last second. Are you going to wear those the whole show? Yes. Okay. It's, it's uh, Director Steve Day. Okay, very good. Go ahead, Mike. I think you should wear them upside down the whole show. I, I yeah, that, this is going to be a trip. If yeah. Yeah. By, by the way, we got a lot to get to today. We, we're going to have a very interesting <laughs> draft later. Uh, we do this a lot in the season where we, whenever the Browns play a certain opponent, we'll draft the best players on the team. What we're doing today is we're looking at all the AFC teams. We've kicked out the four worst teams in the AFC, or the teams we think are the four worst. Which teams did you kick out? Like the Chargers, the Raiders, the Colts. <laughs> I didn't put the Colts, but maybe you can make a case the Colts should be the Broncos. There. And no Broncos. 
All right. So we kicked out those four teams, and we're going to look at the other 12 teams in the AFC, obviously including the Browns, and we are going to draft them or rank them in order of best to worst at skill position, not including quarterback. Running back, wide receiver, tight end, who's got the best of those three rooms combined of the other 12 teams? There's a lot of talent in those 12 teams at those position groups, and we'll see where we get. We're going to talk about the woeful, embarrassing, pathetic performance by the Cavs later. Sean Merriman's going to join us later, but we're going to start with the Guardians, who have been anything but what the Cavs have been. They've been playing great. We'll get to that in a second. First to Mike. Uh, yeah, and just a little teaser. We asked our YouTube community tab where they think the Browns rank in just terms of weapons. I'm sure, I won't be biased at all. 43% said top five. So we're going to see if our That actually rankings, surprises me that it wasn't higher than that. 17% said top three. Oh. 43 <laughs> top five. 31 top 10. And 9% top uh, outside the top 10 so that's the breakdown pre okay we'll see if it matches All right. what we do when we get into it here in a little bit but first today's show is brought to us by game time if you ever had a hard time buying a ticket online especially if it was early in the mlb season and you weren't sure if the seats would be good or couldn't find last minute tickets then you clearly weren't using the Game Time app. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Plus, the prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. They have killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee makes Game Time the best and easiest ticket buying app on all the interweb. It also helps take the guesswork out of anything you have to do. So make sure you continue to use Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Just download the app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Once again, create an account, redeem code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Speaking and let's start with the Guardians. Boy. Yeah, they are locked in. Uh, at, at the plate right now, guys. Eight nothing. I mean, I, I don't know how we're going to do two hour show with Times Square. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean? It's very distracting. <laughs> yeah, you I mean, mean? How do I take a look at you seriously when you got those what stupid talk- glasses? What are you good. talking about? You got to be a professional. Oh, uh, okay. This. I'll try my best. It's eight, eight nothing. The Guardians win. Uh, they take two out of three from Seattle. They're now five and two on the season. We talked about this big buzz coming into the first regular season series or the home series against the, the White Sox. If they could take two out of three from the Twins, that would be huge to come home seven and three. We'll see. Uh, that series uh, getting going tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And the Guardians get their first day off. But the bats were cooking eight eight runs. They got ten hits off Seattle starter, who's uh, George Kirby, who's tremendous young pitcher. They just smacked him around. And how about of all – there were some you know, great numbers for the Guardians yesterday. Stephen Kwan had three hits. Jose had two hits and a bunch of ribbies. Josh Naylor had the oddest, one of the oddest line scores I've ever seen. He was 0 for 3 with three RBIs. <laughs> How often have you I yeah, mean, that, yeah. that's got to be very rare. Yeah. Uh, you could see maybe one RBI, maybe two, but three RBIs without a hit? Very hard to do, but that's what he did yesterday. I was, I was watching <coughs> the MLB radio on the way in. And Jim Duquette was like, yeah, Josh Naylor hit a three-run homer. I'm like, no, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't hit a three-run homer. Uh, but, but the offense, especially the top of the lineup, they were cooking. Every, I mean, they did everything they had to do. Jimenez had a good game as yep. well. Got to be very excited about how the offense has been, Jason, here through the first seven games. Yeah, I watched the game yesterday driving home when you shot up to Michigan just for a quick while the kids are on spring break. Wait a minute, you watched it where? I watched it on my phone as I was driving home. Yeah. You are, boy. Did you just meet him today? You are. You good. I mean, this you is are. Routine. No, he is good. But, I mean, I was not I was watching the road. I just yeah. glanced down once in a while. You look look around. I glanced down. And, yeah. That's and, better than reading. <laughs> I agree with that right? statement. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. better, you know, you could do audio books as well. Nah. That's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> I like the challenge. <laughs> Uh, but, no, I, I agree. George, George Kirby is one of the best young pitchers in the American League. Yeah. And that entire Mariners staff, we talked about it before, they're one of the best young pitching staffs in baseball. And Emerson Hancock, the rookie, is the one that shut him down the most. Yeah. So you have to be encouraged where it's at. You, I still have concerns about where the power is going to come from. We've seen this <coughs> before where you can win in the regular season, putting the bat on the ball, small ball, hitting the gaps, hit and run, all that is fine. But if you really want to – if 
and I know it's April, we got a long way till September and October, but if you really want to make noise in the postseason, you have to be able to hit the ball out of the park. Mm. Like history shows that, the data shows that, yep. everything shows that. So I still have concerns over that, but I'm not going to sit here. We, we can't say that every single day between sure. now and September. Right. So for what they have, you can only work with what you have. What they have, uh, we talked about before, I love Tyler Freeman in center. Rokio at shortstop looks like it's going to work. It's, yeah, it uh, it's, I mean, it's early. But he was a big-time prospect. They tried and they tried and they tried with Gabby Arias. It just didn't take. Rokio's getting his shot, and he's running with it. They're still trying to fit bench guys in. Arias is still getting a ton of at-bats. Uh, I would think in, in another couple of weeks we're going to see Manzardo up here. So it's, it's good times, man. And uh, it's fun to watch this team right now. And Logan Allen pitched really well. Yeah, he, did. Did. he was spotted to a big lead. And, you know, I, I, when you get a big lead sometimes, it's easy to just go out there and throw strikes. You and, know what? And that's what he did. What I like is fast starts, you know, and it, it goes out there to, to pop three in the first inning. That was the first pitch of the game, I think. I was single to left. Yeah, I yeah. was just like, oh, my goodness. So it, it lets you know that. Take the glasses off, please. I can't. I can't What's wrong no with you? Be Stop. professional. You can't do that for a full show. You got to be professional. No Take the glasses uh, off. <laughs> what if I flip them back right? What are we it's saying? It's not going to matter. What are They're we saying? Horrible. What are They're we very saying? Very distracting. What are we saying? <laughs> You're being forced. You're like a child. They're taking your glasses like a child. <laughs> you know <what> I, said? <laughs> I tried, Steve. Yeah, I tried. But yeah. he gonna go put them on in the back. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, fast starts is yeah. always good. Um, and I love the fact that you know Stephen Vogue has put his spin on it. You know, for so many for the past couple of years, or just last year, I should say, mainly. You know, the hitting was such a problem, but to see them constantly putting their bats on the ball and and the A's, you know, it was it was the A's. So, you know, it was kind of like, OK, you know, yeah, anybody right. could do that against the A's. But to do that against guys that are considered good pitchers, you know, that shows that speaks volumes to them. So I think it's something that's here to stay. I'm with you on the home run thing. I stood right there, looked in this camera, and said that they would be top 15. As of today, we are what, 19th? So Rome yeah, was even that's not. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. That's not home. Listen, you Rome, home runs per game Rome wasn't lower. built in the day. And we are four spots away from making me look like a genius. So, you know what's weird <laughs> with the Twin Series coming up? I think Minnesota just hit their first home run yesterday. They oh, have two home runs on the season. We're in front of Minnesota. How about that, Bull? That's wild. Like the Minnesota's Guardians are twenty third in oh home runs gosh. per game. Why are you always, Minnesota's why, 30th, why is, are, have Minnesota you always, is 30th. Have yes. you always been a Debbie Downer like this? <laughs> I'm not a Debbie Downer. I'm very excited about the team. But no. If we're going to give a stat, it's got to be a real it one. It says 19th. Well, because it's too early in the season. Some teams have played six. Some teams have played four. It's a big difference. Not our By problem. the end of the year, we when can, we give it, it's we, everybody's played one. We can, only, we can only go off of the games that's been played. That's right. And right now they're 19th. Go guards. Anyway, the, listen, ultimately, you know, Every day we can come on here and say it's early. Mm -hmm. Yes. Every day we can come on here and say they've got to hit for more power in the playoffs if they make it. Yep. So those two things are just a given. Yep. We understand that. That's the whole – That's the and the first one in terms of it being early, that's just part of baseball for every team. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, you, 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 want, you don't want to get carried away. But the Guardians not just – like last year they couldn't hit at all. Yes. Yeah. But for a number of years – They've been a bad hitting team in April. Even in years where they've been a good hitting team, mm -hmm. they've been a bad hitting team in April. And so far this year, they've gotten off to a great start offensively. Mm -hmm. And that is very promising, especially because it's mostly coming from guys that have either done it in the past, like Jose, like Jimenez, like Juan, to a lesser degree, but still, or guys that you believe – are legitimate prospects that can break out. Right. I should have included Josh Naylor in that first group. The second group, Bo Naylor, Tyler Freeman, Brian Rocchio. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it promising. If it's coming, you know, like, if, 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 if the, you know, the, the David Fry thing. I'm, no, I'm not buying into David Fry having a monster season. And I could be wrong, but that's what, you know, it, so guys like that, and even Will Brennan off to a good start, too. He had two hits and uh, I think three RBIs yesterday. So the fact that it's coming from guys that are highly thought of, it's not completely out of left field, makes it feel more real. And the longer it goes, the more you're going to buy into it. But the fact that they got 20 hits the last two days, they got more than 20 hits, but 20 hits off of Luis Castillo and mm. George Kirby, yeah. who are two of the, I don't know, 15 best pitchers in baseball, at least in the American League, yes. Yes. right? I mean, that is a very promising sign. Those are top, top pitchers. And Seattle is not like it's not like it's a great hitters park. It's you know it's it's okay, 
But uh, I, I, the, the, they've been very clutch. Uh, Josh Naylor, you know, you, you don't have to always get a hit to help the team. And he showed you that a few right. times yesterday. Now, it is going to get significantly colder compared to where they oh, were. Oh, yeah. What's the weather supposed to be like in Minnesota this weekend? I would imagine. I'll tell you right frigid. now. Sandwich. Although it's supposed to be nice Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I think, for well, the White I Sox hope, series. I hope for the eclipse it's nice on Monday because there's it's a, a lot thing. of people coming here. I looked this morning. It said 60 and partly sunny. 58. What time is it? 58. Four. Four. They're 4 o'clock. Four, four. When? 4 o'clock today. Today uh, it's four, 3 o'clock Minneapolis, 4 no, o'clock they're, here. They're playing today? Yeah. It's, it's oh, that's right. They're all tomorrow. It's right, right, right. It's 48 today. Okay. So. I was thinking they were off today and playing tomorrow. They're playing today and then off tomorrow. Yeah. Right? So it's good. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not exactly balmy this time of year in Oakland and Seattle, but it's warmer than what they're going to see now going to Minnesota and Cleveland. And that does make a difference when it gets cold like that. Although I hope I, I, 60s next week would be great for the opener. That'd be It's phenomenal. supposed to be. Good pitching matchup today, Tanner Bybee and Pedro Lopez. Yeah. You're, so you're fa- the Guardians are facing a third straight top-notch pitcher today. Yep. Because Pablo Lopez is really good. And then, right, they're off tomorrow, and then they have the Saturday, Sunday games, both day games, probably, I would think. I, I would think so. Saturday could be. A, no, Saturday's 2 o'clock, and then Sunday's probably 2 o'clock. Okay, so, I mean, yeah, it's a great pitching matchup today. Well, we did that uh, last week. We did the uh, top 10 pitching, pitchers, like lineup, rotations. Yeah. Where was Seattle on that? Number one, I think. That's what I thought. Yeah. Well, and you don't take him out of number one based on two. No, two I'm just games, saying I'm the, I make it more impressive. It's is what very I'm saying. impressive. Castillo yeah. actually got knocked around in his first start. He too. did. He's off to a bad but, start. This but year. the Mariners are legit. That rotation's legit. Yeah, no doubt. And they faced two of their three best guys, mm-hmm. and they did really well. And they uh, and the pitching. Yeah. On the other hand, we've talked so much about the the hitting here. Uh, Shane Bieber's really the only starter that has had a great start until yesterday because Logan Allen. Pitched very well. Yeah, he did. He did. And, you know, it was good. You know, you want to have – the Guardians didn't have – first of all, they didn't win that many games last year. And when they did, it seemed like they had to bring in Emmanuel Class A every single time they won. Yeah, well, so far they've had a few games this year that they've been able to win and not bring him in. And yesterday was one of those games. And that's important because I think he got – he's pitched a lot the last two years. Yes. And they've, they've kind of overworked him. And they need to – the pump the ga- break on him a little bit. And he was one of the guys I heard was like sort of really affected by the pitch clock. He was one of those guys that was really took a long time and last year really sort of sped up his routine a little bit. We'll see this year if he adjusts a little bit better now that they've got a year in and, and he can conform a little bit more and get a little bit more comfortable to it. Where are you at on the pitch clock? I like it. Okay. It's great. Yeah. I love it. I Best agree. thing that baseball ever did. I it's agree. a challenge for some pitchers, no doubt. They got to get you. They're it's taking already. Time to use. It ki- remember Karen check last year? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was a disaster. But it's already <laughs> so much more. Like it's not as big of a deal anymore. And and a year from now, I don't think we'll notice it at all. Like well, so last year, it was a really big deal. Yeah. This year already, it doesn't even feel like it's that big of a deal. Some pitchers said that. Well, I ain't seen no no penalties yet. Or whatever you want to. Yeah, call I don't know. It. If I don't think there've been any this year. If they've now, last goals. year it was at the beginning of the, season, of the season. Oh my guys are getting goodness. used to it now, <laughs> and it's way be- the games are going. Here's the thing now. It's not just that games are shorter, which they are. Games on average, I think, were almost 30 minutes shorter, which I never thought it would make that big a difference, but yeah. it did. I think it was 25, 26 minutes. But the thing is, what's even misleading about that is the 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 high scoring games, the slugfests. We don't care if those take a long right. time. What you wanted to get rid of was the games that were bogged down by pitching changes and, and all these things in the eighth, ninth inning, and it was like a 3-2 game, and it went three hours and 15 minutes. Those low-scoring games are taking two and a half hours, 240 consistently. Yeah. If the, if the 10-9 game goes three and a half hours, who cares? You're right. getting a lot of action. Mm-hmm. That's what you want. Have yeah. you seen the side-by-side? I think it was Secretariat and Zach Greinke throwing one pitch. And it took the exact same amount of time. I think, Have you I seen, seen it? I think, yeah, it was, yeah. I think when is Secretariat? I think it was Secretariat. Yeah. Secretariat winning the Kentucky Derby. Right. And Zach Greinke throwing one pitch pre-pitch clock days right. took the exact same amount of time. Yeah, it was, it was funny because there's, they don't use the pitch clock in, uh, I think, Japan or Korea yet. Maybe they play with a little more speed. I don't know. But when they – I'm not sure for those uh, – for the San Diego – Dodger games, I don't know if they were using the pitch clock for those two games that started the season. Oh, yeah, I, didn't, I don't know. I, didn't, I noticed they didn't, when I was watching the games, that they didn't have, because now you see the pitch clock, yeah, yep. especially when it's down the, you know, below 10 seconds. Right. But I didn't, they didn't show it then. So I don't know if they were just doing it separately and they just weren't showing it for whatever reason. But anyway, 
Uh, but uh, yeah, Emmanuel Classe has only pitched two innings. So the Guardians are five and two, and Classe has only pitched in two out of seven games. That's pretty. I mean, that's great. Yeah. So for them to have three wins already that they didn't need. What did he have seventy appearances last year? I think he had, uh, 70. he had 74. So that's almost I mean, every other day. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> it's insane. He had, he had the most saves, but the most blown. Yeah. Yeah. He had nine losses. Because they were, every game was close. Uh, so, I, all right, you know, but at the end of this season, I'd love to see him with 58 appearances. Mm-hmm. I think that would make a huge difference. Go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say through seven games, and once again, it's early sample size. They played a terrible <laughs> team. They just beat Seattle. They have a plus 28 run differential. Yeah. Through seven games, which is the best in baseball, and it's not even close. The second best is Atlanta at plus 21 and the Diamondbacks at plus 21. Seven runs better. And those teams, Arizona's also played seven games. Atlanta's only played five. But I saw this stat from uh, Sarah Lang, and Steve, you want to take tag board full. It's not just good for this year. This is historically good for the franchise. The third highest run differential through seven games in team history. That 99 team at plus 33, 1922. 30 run differential so they're not just beating teams early they're beating the crap out of some of these squads yeah that's uh it's a great stat um run differential over not in the short size but an over the length of the season really is a decent indicator for how good a team is yeah when you see a team that's bad but has a good run differential or vice versa it's very uncommon and you're like that team should be better right um you know sometimes there's extremes you win a game 19 to 1 it could could skew it a little bit but mm-hmm. the guardians haven't done that they it's not been one game where they just scored a million runs and again they've, they've got that run differential with the staff that really hasn't pitched that well outside of Bieber. no no so. they've gotten three good starts out of seven yeah and by the way just to give you a little extra context in 99 that plus 33 their best run differential ever that team ended up losing alds in 1920 two cleveland won the world series 22 22 Either one of these two tweets is wrong from either the Guardians or Sarah Lang. This says 1920, but plus 30. Whatever year that was, it's okay. World Series. 20, I mean, 20, I don't get To me, nothing that happened before the 40s matters in baseball. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, I don't pay attention to that. There were no black players. There were no Latin players. There were no Asian players. I don't, I don't care what happened then. <laughs> I don't disagree with that statement, actually. Um, it's, it's meaningless pre-Jackie Robinson. I don't give a crap about anybody that played before then. Uh, for me, I know other people feel that way. Uh, yes, apparently, Jeff uh, Passan, who's, of course, from Cleveland, as we talked about before the show, made the statement that Babe Ruth would, would be no good these days. I was going to ask you guys about that, yeah. Well, and Chris Russo, who's like one of these old school guys who thinks only, you know, baseball since the 50s sucks, uh, he, he lost his mind about it, of course. And I, to me, I think they're both nuts because how, how do I know? Right. I don't know. He played 100 years ago. How the hell do I know? All, I, all I'll say about Babe Ruth in comparison to – is that he was so much better than the other players of his time that I find it hard to believe he would suck now. But th- th- how would you know? It's 100 years ago. Guys were in different shape. And, and, I would tend to think anyone who stayed up all night drinking and boozing and smoking probably wouldn't fare too well in today's yeah, game. I don't know. Mickey Mantle did that, too. I mean, but a little more I, recently. Well, not, very, not re- a little bit, but yeah, not yeah, much. Yeah. All so. I'll say about Babe Ruth is that he has a good candy bar. Baby Ruth, you like this? I don't know if that had any, has anything to do with him. It doesn't, but it, close enough. Yeah. All right. And, and Otani's better, yes. And Otani I, hit his first home run I don't run care what nobody say. Night. Otani's the best player I've ever seen. Well, well didn't I didn't see, see Babe, Babe Ruth, too. You know yeah. what I mean. He better yeah. than Babe Ruth. There, I there said that. Go. I said that. Uh, one last baseball note real <laughs> yeah. quick. The A's have announced where they'll be playing for the next three seasons before moving to Vegas. Is it Sacramento? Sacramento at a A stadium that holds 10,000 people. Well, they're not getting 10,000 people a game anyway. For three years. <laughs> three years. That's not like moving in with the in-laws for six months <laughs> while they're finishing the house. That's yeah. with, by the way, with the potential to play there in 2028 as well if the stadium oh in Vegas God. is not ready. That's this is a disaster. Sacramento should be embarrassed. The mayor of Sacramento is a disgrace. They <laughs> Why? Should not have done. The because A's should be the A's of the disgrace. Well, they're the bigger disgrace, sure. But Sacramento should say, screw you. You're screwing our fellow city, Oakland. And- oh, they don't care about that. I'm about to say, uh, why would they care about that? You know the money that's going to generate for that city? Three classless. years of professional baseball there? That's classless. That's the last These people time. are just the worst. Last time. He's millionaire. Did- this, this guy who owns the Oakland Athletics is a piece of garbage. You know what's amazing? Is that they don't have an art model. They don't have a guy from city council going up there saying that they can't play and uh, they shouldn't be able to play in Sacramento. They don't have a law keeping them. I, I, did I see something that there's a chance they could go back to Oakland, like, permanently still? I thought I saw a headline the other day about, like... I, I did not see that. I, until, until they break ground on that stadium in Vegas, 
I still am not 100% convinced this I mean, is happening. Baseball doesn't care about the people of Oakland, obviously. They should force this owner out. He's been a disgrace. He, spe- he makes uh, Dolan look like he has big pockets. Yeah. I mean, their payroll is like four. four. O- Otani's making more money. Well, not this year because of their <coughs> payments. But the average per year of Otani's contract is more than the entire A's payroll. Isn't it amazing how once you picture – Donald Sterling is the only owner – that's been forced to sell by the league, yeah. right? That's the clip. Like Snyder doing, right? went out on his own, didn't he? In Washington. Uh, they kind I, of forced him out. I don't want to say that. I feel that. like they, they forced, forced him out. Yeah. I feel like they okay. did. Yeah. So Snyder and Sterling were forced out. But, but look, look at the extreme. I was going to say that. Look you at know? the despicable human beings that they are. Yeah. Before they finally said, all right, you got to go. Yeah, you, right, can't, right. you can't stay here. You could do anything. Once you get in that club, you can do anything you want. Anything. Anything. Yeah, it's sad. Almost. You're billionaire. Almost. When you're rich, you can get away with pretty much anything. Sad but true. Go ahead, Mike. Robert Kraft. All right. Kicking. We're going to move on here, talk a little Cavs after a quick word from Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this. Now through April 30th. Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from the other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of your first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. And Robinhood Financial LLC is a registered broker-dealer. Guys, it was ugly last night. Cavs, Suns on ESPN, a 122-101 loss for Cleveland. Tyvis, you texted us at about 11 o'clock saying, I had to turn this thing off. So I'll ask you this first, Tyvis. We saw Donovan Mitchell. He took off Tuesday night's game, came back last night, and looked hobbled to the utmost extent. Should the Cavs just sit him until the playoffs start and hope for the best at this point? Yes. Yeah, they should. I mean, listen, when you watch him play, you can clearly see that he's he's bothered by his knee. I mean, he went to dribble the ball and try to get low and try to take it to the hole. He ended up losing the ball. And defensively, you know, he's he's limping around. I just I understand that you want to be out there for your guys. And I understand that you are kind of considered the heart and soul of this team. But I think that you, you're doing a disservice a little bit when you're not being able to be 100%. And I think that if your knee is still affecting your, your play and you know that the playoffs is coming up in a couple of days, I get that you want to – you probably thinking to yourself, I want to see how I can play with it, what I can and cannot do. But I think that you also should be trying to get as healthy as you can. You know, maybe you're not going to be 100%, but maybe we can get you to 85% if you just take a couple of games off. That should be the case. Um, but right now, it's no point. Like, y'all in the playoffs anyways, right? Yeah. They're in the playoffs Guys, anyway. So, I don't – yeah, you need to just chill out for a second. Let me tell you something. J.B. Bickerstaff should, be, should have been fired already. I would have fired him last night after that game. I don't Whoa, care. Whoa, it's a little too late for that. It's not ain't too it? late. I'd fire. I would make JB smooth the coach. I don't care. <laughs> Give me anybody. This guy is a clown show. Why on earth was Donovan Mitchell, who can barely walk, playing thirty minutes, playing at all, Hasht- let alone thirty minutes? Hashtag fire JB. Hashtag let him know that JB should be fired. <laughs> he sucks. He's terrible, and he should be fired. And I'd fire Kobe Altman's ass, too. Kick them both right the hell out the door. God. Jason, why have these guys not been fired? God. Shouldn't JB be fired immediately? I, I, would, I thought after the Miami game he might get fired last week. I thought. And, and but, this late? Well, why not? <laughs> but it does feel like a panic move if you do it now. Yeah. It is. You it's might, at, time. at this point, you might as well ride it out. Yeah, anyway. You might ride it out. You never want to admit you're panicking. If, if you're gonna, Even if, if you are. So if you fire him, what's, what's going to happen? What's going to change? Probably nothing. But but I, so what's but, the point? But I know. I here's what I know. I know with 100 percent certainty nothing's going to change, and this team's going to suck and get swept in the first round with JB. Say it might be the same. Creates a spark. It might be the same thing. But at least there's a chance there'll be something different. 
they, they he, this is this is the same coach that had them at that won eighteen out of twenty games. So what? They <laughs> beat nothing but crappy teams in the middle of the season. <laughs> They're falling apart. You, if you did it now, the guy that who, whoever you're putting in that spot <laughs> has yeah. no time. That's what I'm saying. Doc Rivers been of, talking about this the whole time. Doc he, Rivers is an idiot. Nobody cares about him. But you, you, you right. can't like implement anything that you <laughs> yeah. want to do differently than what you've been doing. There's just no, there's no time. But maybe, the, maybe a new leader shakes up the energy on the team. It will. I don't know. It will next yeah. year. I, I, I it's do. it's it's bad. It is. Yeah, oh, it's, it's terrible. Bad. And the thing is, JB prides himself on defense, and they look terrible on that year yeah, too. The whole thing just looks. I, I bad. Why did they play Donovan so many minutes last night? Is I don't that know. him? Did he force it? No, I, I doubt it. Because he I mean, sat I, out. I haven't talked to him when they're on the West Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He sat out the game. Is Joe before. out there? Joe Varden? <laughs> Chris Fedor is. Chris is out there. Right, I'm gonna text Fedor. Uh, what the hell's going on here? I, it the body language is really bad. On this team right now, I think everybody's hurt. Dude. It's just it's this is this is about a worst case scenario for when you're headed toward the playoffs where you want to be at. It's a, it's unfortunate, but it's this whole thing looks like it's falling apart. I don't know if they're gonna have enough time to pull it together. Would I sit Donovan until the playoffs? I would sit him between now and the playoffs. I don't yeah. know if I would sit him the whole time because I don't know if you want. I mean, last night, correct me if I'm wrong. Last night was the first time the starting five was together, was it not? In, in quite a, a while, long, in a long, long time. Yeah. yeah. So you want to? Well, get... no, no. Sec- they played it. They also played against Denver. Was the first time they were all together. So they played. Yeah. Okay. And they got smoked by two legitimate teams. Both those games. You need time with these guys, and I, I know that they've played a lot of minutes together yeah. over the last two years. But I would not want to sit these guys cold and then roll them out for game one. But isn't the he's rest, a, at this point he's, he's the not rest healthy? He's yeah. not healthy. Yeah, he's not. But and I don't, he's not going to be healthy. But I, I don't know that it's going to make that much like of a I difference. Like I said, seventy-five percent compared to eighty-five percent is a big difference. Uh, I, yeah. He he At the can't very least, do what he wants. He can't the year. do what he want to do. There were actually moments <laughs> last night where I felt like, oh, that kind of looks like Donovan. No, and then, and then other no, that, I, I saw it a little bit. And then there's other moments where it was like, oh man, this is bad. It, Here he was can't. his quote after the game. Chris asked him about how his knee feels, his recovery back, and this is from Donovan, word for word. Quote, I'm trying to be easier on myself. That's the biggest thing. I have to be patient with this kind of thing. I'm not just going to come out there and be what I was. It's going to take time to build that, and that's what this is for, and that's why I'm playing these games, to get back out there and get these reps. I want to be perfect for my group. I'm continuing to build so when we get to the playoffs, I feel more ready to go. Like I said, he try, he, he know he ain't going to be 100%, so he's trying to figure out how I can be successful in the playoffs with this injury. That's clearly what this is. It's a shame and that it's going this way. It's really a shame. It's a shame. if he were 100% healthy, at least you'd, you'd think, okay, maybe they'll win a series. Yeah. And that would be exciting. Yeah. With him like this, this they can't win anything. No. Ah, that, <sighs> if you're, if, it's because the, I'm going to tell you, it looked like they all kind of just gave up. I guess, again, the Darius thing, I don't understand it, bro. Like, I just don't get it. You was literally a star a couple of years ago. Even last year, you had look good. This year, you had, like, early on, you had a couple of moments. But for the past, like, six or seven games, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Like, that 15 and 8 is fine. But who you are and what you've been capable of before, Knowing that your 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 the, your ace is hurt like that, you should be taking over way more games. Your impact on the game should be through the roof, and it's just not. And it's I don't know what that's about. I really don't. It's it, amazing that the Cavs are still the three seed as poorly as they've played. That's the how the rest well, of the East is imploding. Around yeah, nobody Boston said and it. Everybody else. Is Milwaukee's not. Pl- Orlando is the only team playing well. Mike. Uh. Yeah, they're up and down, but yes. <laughs> then they let Devin Booker and Devin went for 40. KD went for 32. I'm just like. Right now, the Cavs are a game and a half back in Milwaukee. They're a half game. Orlando has moved into the four spot. They're a half game back in Orlando, but we remember Orlando's got the tiebreaker, and they're tied in the loss column. The Cavs have played one more game. The Knicks are a game back of the Cavs, but again, they're tied in the loss column. The Cavs have played two more games than the Knicks. And then Miami's two games behind the Knicks. So the Cavs are going to finish probably as the three, the four, or the five. They're probably going to play either Orlando, the Knicks, or I, we don't know. They could end up playing Miami. They could end up playing Indiana. It's a giant crapshoot. <coughs> and and B's back, so Philly could catch a game or two here. I mean, no, there's only right. Five Philly's or six only left. a game and a half back of Miami for the sixth seed. Ooh. 
So, you're probably not going to know who you're playing to the last day of the season. Yeah. If it ended today, they'd play Miami. Right. Good. Good. Miami's got the tiebreaker <laughs> over Indiana. Don't do that. Yes. Don't do that. Yeah, they're going to get smoked. Why? Why uh, like, uh, I still got a little faith. Y'all, my goodness. Tybus, their best player looks like crap. I get that. Their second best <laughs> players look like crap all year. Yeah. That, it, the <laughs> only thing that... The only positive right now is Evan Mobley's playing his best basketball. I, agree I said this that. before the show. Yeah. They should run for the next five games. Just run the offense through Mobley. Give him the reps. We've never seen what an offense run through Evan Mobley looks like. Donovan and Darius are yeah. not up to where they need to be. You might as well try it right now. And what happened to Jared Alley? He don't, he don't get boards no more. I mean, we, he, this is the same know, guy man. that just had 20-20 like a week ago. Five it, boards. It's, they watching them is depressing, isn't it? It was like it's so because much fun they, in the middle of the they, season. It's like hot and cold with them. Like when they hot, like they like the best. Yeah, but they, they can compete with lately, anybody. They've only been good against bad teams, and even that's not been consistent. No, they beat a good team. When's the last time they beat a good team? Who did they play before the Nuggets? It was a bad team, uh, right? Charlotte, I'll, I'll pull, I'll pull Philly. Philly. It was yeah, but that was before Embiid came back. So what? They're not good. They lost Embiid. to him without Embiid. I know, but they're not a good this, team without it's, Embiid. It's a weird team. This is a weird team. They beat the best teams in the league. They have a couple weeks ago. They've been absolutely annihilated by some of the best teams in the league. <laughs> it's it's been a strange year, man. It's a weird year. Uh, it's the, it's, it's a, just it's a shame that this is how. This is where they're at, heading into the most important time of the year. Right. We've talked all year how important this year is, how important this postseason is, and for this whole thing to be sort of unraveling the way it is at this time. And, well, if, and Jason, if it ends the way it looks like it's going to end, yeah, that's going to continue into the offseason because they're probably going to trade Donovan Mitchell, it right? Just, if he forces their hand, yeah. yeah. It's just interesting because – they're in a similar situation that the Cleveland Browns were in. They dealt with a bunch of injuries, but that team was built with the right stuff. They didn't let that stop them. And the Cavs is like the complete opposite. Like, I guess that's as a fan, that's why I'm judging it the way. Like, I just watched Cleveland Browns just do what they did with all the injuries. The Cavs got injuries, but they got guys who's had moments that have shined. And now knowing that guys are not 100%, you would think that they would step up in, in, in the absence of that. And well, they're not doing that. Well, they did that early yeah. when they lost Mobley. I agree. Yeah, the start Darius. of that 18-2 and two was with some injuries. With some injuries. And they were they were. So, is th- so you know it's there. But for some odd reason. But Donovan reason, was healthy at but that yes, time, too. So your best yeah. player was, was hurt, not hurt. Two Do- things on that. When yeah. they went on that 18-2 stretch, I can't emphasize this enough. That was the best basketball Donovan Mitchell had ever played in his entire life. It wasn't just a healthy Mitchell. Right. It was Mitchell at his best. And role players are role players for a reason. They get hot and streaky, and they can make a ton of shots over a month's stretch. Yeah. But the reason they're role players and not starters or stars is it goes month on, month off, month on, month off, essentially. Right. Mm-hmm. The best ones are more consistent for that month when they went 18-2, and two, the two months, yeah. six weeks, whatever it was. Everybody was making shots. Right. Everybody. I mean, look at Okoro. He's off. done. I feel like he's done nothing since then. Well, he's, he's been, been hurt the last couple of weeks. He's what? Hurt. He, he didn't play last night. He's been hurt. <laughs> no, I know that. But even but he was playing for a while before. Yeah, he, he's not playing he did, as well as he And his game went away. No, he hasn't been playing as he well. He did the, the same one thing, thing I noticed, last year, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. The one thing I noticed with Mitchell last night, and Jason, I'm curious if you, I mean, it's pretty evident, not noticed, but he's obviously hobbled. And just the ability to get past guys with yeah. these. It isn't there. And there was a couple of occasions, including his first bucket last night, where he Euro-stepped around a guy instead of just going up and attacking. And if he doesn't have that burst and the ability to create, get into the paint, I don't know if you could run your offense through him in the playoffs, even though I have no idea who else you'd want to run it through. There's no one else. Who, who else are you going to run it through? I, I don't know, but if a hobbled Donovan who's struggling to get past Phoenix Suns perimeter defenders in the regular season. Yeah. I don't love my chances against the Jalen Suggs or an OG Ananobi or somebody yeah. when the defense steps up. I, I hope he gets healthy. Like, we really need a miraculous. I want to know. the odds? It's, it's with three weeks from the playoffs. I need to know why, That's why Darius is That's doing why I'd this. sit him to the playoffs. Yeah. Why is Darius playing like this? I need to I know. know. It's, it's something's it's not bizarre. right. It's bizarre. I mean, he's like, been off. <laughs> something is wrong. I, did JB lose the locker room? Like, what is it? Are y'all trying to – are y'all trying to imply that y'all don't want to play for JB no more? Like, is some of it him? I need to know what the heck happened. Is some of it him, his immaturity? There's been a lot of rumors yes. about him being immature. Well, I, I do think that he's got some growing up to do, 100%. Yeah. Like, I do think that. Of course, some of it's him. You have yeah. to put it on him. He's the player. I think everybody takes – some of it's on JB. Some of it's on Darius. Yeah. 
you know, whatever, however you want to divide that pie, I, I don't know. That's yeah. the game we love to play around here is who, who gets how much of the blame. Right. <laughs> but those, those two, yeah. you know, especially Darius. It falls on Darius. I, I have no idea. This is, there's no explanation for it, but you better figure it out. And it's kind of too late for this year, although it's not. you got the playoffs in front of you. Yeah. you got a lot of years left on that contract. you got to figure this out. I mean, the guy was an all-star a couple of years yeah. ago, and he looks like just a guy right he, now. I'm telling you, he was considered the next – of that wave of terrific young superstar players. He was yeah. on the U.S. select team. Yeah. Like, only the best of the best make that team. And that tells you where his trajectory was supposed to be. Yeah. And I don't know what's happened. Mm. All right, Mike. Let's it talk really some is football. Last thing on DG, we'll move on. Yeah. But it really is unexplainable. You could blame injuries. You could blame confidence. I know his grandma passed away this season. Like, a hundred different variables. But at the end of the day, he just hasn't played up to the standard you need him to. And you look at his career numbers, two years ago, 2021, 22 points, nine assists. Last year, his first season with Donovan, his first season, you would think that'd be the roughest year of their backcourt marriage. 21 and a half points, eight assists. This season, 17 points, six assists, shooting numbers are down, three point numbers are all time low. It's as low as free throw percentage. He's shooting fewer free, fewer free throws than he has in any season of his career outside of his rookie season. It, there's not a good answer. Yeah, it right. really is the big question, and there's not an answer to it. All right, so, let's, all right. Let's get to football here. Let's move on and do a draft after a quick word from a new sponsor. eBay good. Motors is now on the UCSS bandwagon. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With more than 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed only fit for U.S. customers. All right, welcome aboard to them. We appreciate that. And uh, all right, so we have taken what we think are the 12 best skill position groups in the AFC. The AFC, as we all know, is loaded, including all four teams in the AFC North. And we, we kicked out the Chargers, even though they have a good quarterback, the Colts and their young quarterback. No, we ain't doing quarterbacks. No, I know that. I'm just saying. But, These are but just weapons. The Titans we kicked out and the Broncos, right? Uh, no, Titans are in this. I was to say. It's the Broncos, you, you can pick, Colts, even if I didn't and list it, If you want to make an argument for a team you that's You got the not Titans listed. in, but the Colts out? They got D-Hop. The t- Titans have Gay, uh, Hopkins, Ridley, Traylon Burks, Tony Pollard. Uh, they, they have some weapons now. All right. All right, all right just so on the same page, though, if a team's not listed, you can still make a case for them if you want to put them on right. 10. All right, Patriots. I'm going to read the Oh, Patriots yeah, the Patriots shouldn't included. be in there either. They're not included. Okay, go ahead. But here, just so we're on the same page, I'm going to just read you the weapons for each of these teams that I made graphics for. If you want to argue for a team that's not, you still have that right. But just so we're all arguing for the same thing, we're going to run through these real quick. Steve, let's take this first one. The Browns weapons, just so we're on the same page. Chubb, Ford, Foreman. I also alluded, uh, excluded a few guys just to fit on the graphic. But your receivers, Cooper, Judy, Moore, Tillman, Bell. Your tight ends, Njoku and Jordan Akins. Next up is the Steelers. They have Harris, Warren, they signed Cordell, Par- uh, Cordell Patterson, Pickens, Cordell. Van- Cordell Patterson. They have Pickens, Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin, Quez Watkins, and uh, Denzel Mims at receiver. Their tight ends, Pat Fryermuth and Darnell Washington, who they drafted last year. The Bengals also in this. Zach Moss, Chase Brown, Travion Williams in the backfield. Uh, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Irwin Jones, and Bull, you could pronounce that last one. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce his name. Uh, I can't even remember now. It's um, so he's not really important. Oh, Gusecki and Hudson are your no, tight ends. No, no, no. It doesn't even sound like it's spelled. I can't remember. I can't remember. We'll go to the Ravens. They signed Derrick Henry. They have Keaton Mitchell, Justice Hill, uh, Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman, Nelson Aguilar, and Tyron Wallace. Their tight ends: Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely. Keep going on. The Chiefs: 
Pacheco, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, Rasheed Rice, Marquise Brown, a bunch of receivers that don't truly matter. We have Kelsey and yeah. Noah Gray at tight ends. <laughs> Moving on to Jordan the Aikens gets a mention, but their receivers don't matter. <laughs> well, people here know who it is. Okay. The Texans have Joe Mixon, Damian Pierce, uh, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs, Tank Dell, Noah Brown, Robert Woods, and John Mechie, Jordan Schultz, and Brevin Jordan at the tight end. The Dolphins have Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Braxton Berrios, Carcraft, and Azuka Mama, I think. Azuka Mama? No idea. Uh, Mostert, A-Chain, and Jeff Wilson in the backfield. And three tight ends. Johnu Smith was their big offseason addition. The Ooh. Bills, I put them in here. I know they lost Stephon Diggs. They still have James Cook, uh, Shakir, Curtis Samuel, Matt Collins, and KJ Hamler, their top four receivers yeah, at the moment. We can move on from that. Oh, they got Curtis Samuel. Go Bucks. The tight end room. The Jets have Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, Go Bucks. Uh, Mike Williams, who I spelt wrong. My bad, Mike. Deshaun Gibson, Alan Lazard, Conklin, and Rucker are their tight ends. The Titans. Who's their wide receiver, Gibson? Uh, Xavier Gibson. He was a rookie last year. Never even heard of him. He had the punt return touchdown against Buffalo in, in week one to win it. All right. Uh, the Titans, Tony Pollard, Tajay Spears, DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, Traylon Burks, and Nico Westbrook-Akine. And their tight ends are two guys I'm not familiar with. And I threw the Jaguars <coughs> on here just as a last uh, weapons graphic. They have ETN, Tanks Bigby, Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis, Zay Jones, Devin Duvernay, Parker Washington, Evan Ingram is their starting tight end. And then if you want to add any other teams in there, you are more than welcome. I mean, the Colts have Michael Pittman. They have Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, I should have made one for them. That's a miss on me. Those are two really good players. But, yeah, I guess the rest of their so that's 12. not really good. We're going to rank our top 10. If you want to take a team that's not there, by all means, take a team that's not there. But of those 10, which group has the best overall set of weapons? I mean, it's hard. You just race through them so quick. You, I told can, you we were going to do this last can night. We, so. I know, I know. I, know. <laughs> I thought maybe we'd have a graphic where it was kind of up there. Can we go through them one at a time, like, oh, just, just so I can look at them again? Steve, if you go to 224, when Bull t- take it full, when Bull says he's good, you can move on to the yeah. next one. All right. So for the, for the, ca- for the Cavs, for the Browns, let's, let's, let's – guys that we think are Pro Bowl caliber or Pro Bowl caliber, all right? Is that fair? Is How many per team? Okay. So for the for the for the Browns, there's three. You've got is Nick Chubb still Pro Bowl caliber? It's impossible to say. It's impossible to say. Amari Cooper is the joke who's borderline. There you go. All right, there you go. So that's we'll say three. Go ahead. Next. I mean, I think the Dolphins are number one. I, I mean, thought the Dolphins. Well, I, I don't, don't think it's, it's go rapid fire. Next one. Next one. I don't Next think it's one. A debate for one. Steelers have one player. Uh, Pro Bowl-ish. Pickens, I think. Go ahead, next. Bengals have Chase, have Higgins. That's it. <coughs> Pro Bowl players. Next. Derrick Henry, could he still be a Pro Bowler? Maybe. Zay Flowers, maybe. Mark Andrews, yes. It's added up to two for me. I don't know. I'm yeah. doing whatever. Go ahead, next. Rice could Next. be a pro bowler. Kelsey, too. <laughs> Go ahead. Sheesh. Uh, I, I, think, I think they're going to be Love great. their wire. I mean, I their wire machine, of course, too. absurd. <laughs> they're going to be really I, I good. I think they definitely They got Nico Collins and Diggs and Dell could all be pro bowlers. Mixon, maybe. I guess if I put Mixon, I could put Zach Moss in, too. Well, three. Listen, Mixon can That's be. That's four. Schultz if, could be a pro single, bowler. Single, yeah. If Singletary like, could have a season like yeah. he had, Mixon. That's five. So I'm going up to three on the Bengals and five on the Texans. Go ahead. Every last A-Chain, one A-Chain, if he stayed healthy, could be a pro bowler. <laughs> Every Hill. last one of them. Why? I mean, Hill and Waddle. <laughs> the rest of their wide receivers are nothing. Oh, those two are pretty doggone those good. Those two are great. A-Chain I, is really talented, but he was – Hurt a lot in college, and he was hurt a lot last year. Most are solid. They got nothing at tight end. Go, who's Smith? Who's their tight end? John, John Smith. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's all right. Yeah, he's good. He's all right. Go ahead. Next. Next. <laughs> yeah, agreed. <laughs> Garrett. Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson are great. The rest of those guys, Mike Williams is all Mike right. Mike Williams is all right. That's it. Hopkins is good. Ridley's good. And it, wide receiver, they got like three nice receivers. They're interesting. Pollard's good. But, it, you know, last year he had his first chance to be the guy, and he wasn't very good. It's interesting. They got that, nothing at tight end. Their team is interesting, but it all falls on the quarterback. Well, they have no quarterback, but for this argument, you know, that doesn't you know, matter. You're not a Will Levis guy? I don't like him. 
He had so he threw pretty yeah, well no. last year. You out on him too? Not enough. I'm, I'm. If you make me pick right now, I'd be more out than in. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, next, Mike. Last one. Etienne is good. Kirk is good. They're okay. Davis. Gabe Davis. It's all right. Eh. Nah, Ingram is a Pro Bowler. I think Miami. I mean, they got three Pro Bowlers. They're not top end Pro Bowlers. Te- is but Miami Texans Browns. That's how is problem. Miami number one? I put Miami one in Houston too. I don't understand how Miami. I don't think Miami's won. I think they got two. Well, you don't have to. Well, I'm, so do the Bengals have two great receivers. Okay, and the running back that scored how many touchdowns did Mo Raheem score last year? Twenty yeah, something. Yeah, but he's old. First of all, shout out to you, Raheem. That's my boy. First yeah, of all, so but he's, he's old. No, he had a good year. I give him that. He's still fast. But we're not judging them based on what they did last year. We're judging them what we think they're going to do this year. Now, I like A Chain a lot. I like him better than any of the backs on the Bengals. But he's – I would put the Texans number one for me. Okay, we can do that. I came in Miami <laughs> one. Houston we can do that. Two, but my, as as that's fine with me. I can put the Texans guys, one. As good as Tyreek Hill and Waddle are, the rest – they have nothing – no other pass catchers that are any good. But those two are so much better I know. than everybody John else. Else. Not, John Smith they, is they're good. They're so much better than Chase and Higgins? No, I mean on their team. I mean right. to, to elevate. John Smith is good, though. Come on, and Raheem Mostert scored 20 touchdowns last year. But I'm saying the rest of their pass catchers are, are nothing. Whereas, whereas the Texans, their fifth wide receiver is a, de- a good player. Like a I, who was player. The, wait, who was the Texans fifth wide receiver? Robert, Robert Woods. Woods. Really? He's their fifth wide receiver. Dang. Noah Brown is their fourth wide receiver. <laughs> go go Bucks. Had a couple of huge games last year. Go Bucks. But again, it's this year. I don't know. I'm I'm voting Texans one, but these guys. Are I, no, no, I'm with you. I'll take the Texans for one. All I right. came in Miami one and Houston two, but I mean, yeah. I'm not going to argue if you want to put Houston one. So I we th- have two votes they're... for Houston at one. Then so Houston yeah. now has the best crop of weapons. Are you guys going Miami too? He has one first place vote from Jason. So Bolin Tivis, Miami. All right, who else is in consideration? So Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Are the Browns in consideration? Not yet. I don't think. So let's look at. Here's, I mean, how can you let? Uh, well, it's it's the Chubb thing. I, I think Cincinnati's got better weapons than they Cleveland. got. They got two. They're pretty freaking good. They're better than the Browns' top two. Amari. Would you rather have Chase and uh, Higgins? Thank you. Don't do that. Would you rather have Chase and Higgins or rather, any two from the? Browns? I'd rather have a healthy Amari Cooper and a healthy Nick Chubb. Really. No. Oh, no. <laughs> no. So, I mean, not at all. The yeah. Browns are top five. But, yes, but, I think the Browns definitely not, are top we're not five. There yet. I, all right, let's look at Dolphins Bengals. All right. At wide receiver, who, who you taking Waddle and Hill over Chase and Higgins? Yes. 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 All right. I would take not Ch- by much. I would take yes. Chase and Higgins, but maybe I'm biased. So I'll go with you guys. What about the rest of the tight end? Mike Gusecki versus John Smith. John Smith, that's probably a wash. Yeah. Running back, I give the Dolphins the edge at running back, so I'm with you. I'll go Dolphins two. So Dolphins two. So Houston one, Dolphins two. So for three, Bengals. Who do we want to compare them to? I think the Browns. The Browns. Cleveland and Baltimore both. I Baltimore, I think. Okay, let's look at the. Baltimore had no receivers outside of Zay Flowers. Um. Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is really good. Now the Browns, but so they in the same position as the, the Browns. Yeah. Well, that's why they're. <laughs> but we're comparing you them. Well, I wouldn't put them. This is for number three, though. Well, so that means the Browns is in contention for three. I, I would put the Bengals three. I'd put the. Oh, Bengals okay. Well, yeah, I agree. I I think it's very close. I actually think it's very close and between the Bengals even, and Browns. I do not like they. I like Chase Brown more than I like Zach Moss. I really do. I I. Well, you get them both if you. Mike, I, are, yeah, I'm just. The only problem is the problem is Nick Chubb. We don't know what it's going to be. It's, it's, that's that's the problem yeah. right now. We're projecting. I mean, with him again, I would take Chase and Higgins over any two on the Browns. Any two, you'd have to, and that's yes. ultimately why I'm agreeing with you. I think the Bengals would be three. The are we missing anyone, Mike? As we're because I'm just doing this off the top of my head. Is yeah. there anyone? Uh, any? The Titans are not this high. Obviously, the Bills no. Uh, Steelers no. It, no, I think I think you guys are pretty right. Who so are we far. forgetting? The Jags. 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 The Jags. Jags. Not bad, but they don't have that high end. They have a, a really mean, good wide receiver Christian, one, a really good tight end one, and a really good running back one, but none of them are top end ones. Christian Kirk is good for them. I don't know how right. good he'd be with somebody else. All right, so we're, are we and going? Gabe, to- and if Gabe, if you look at Gabe Davis as big play Gabe as he likes to call himself, that's yeah. good. 
Because ETN is good and Evan Ingram is good. Those yeah, two are right. Pro- They're good. Yeah. All right, so we got the Bengals three. So let's – let's Now is where the debate begins. So now Browns versus Ravens. Browns, Ravens, and then is there anyone else in there that we're not – Maybe the Jaguars, Jaguars, I think. And if – I do think the it Jets. depends on how you look at – Tony Pollard, but the Titans' weapons. I'm about to say that. On paper. On paper, it looked good. That trio of receivers is really right. good. All right, well. It does look okay. good. Okay. I'm not saying I take more of the Browns. I'm just saying those are other teams you can yeah, High yeah. end, like high end elite talent. The Browns, the Titans don't have. d Anybody. He's not high end elite. At this Calvin point Ridley. I don't think so. They're not no, high end not. elite. I would take Amari Cooper over d right now. I agree. Right? Yes. So, Amari Cooper's better than any of the receivers on the Titans. I agree. Amari Cooper's better than any receivers on the Ravens. Is he better than yes. Zay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. just asking I mean, you. Boy, I'm you, know, saying, you know, almost cussed. You, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> You'd rather have Zay be... Because he's younger, he's yeah. Younger. But right now, for this year, I Amari, agree. Amari, of the teams we're looking at now, the Titans, the Browns, <laughs> the Ravens, made me curse. And, the ja- <laughs> and the Jaguars, guys. I'm just asking the question. I'm not All saying right. I'm disagreeing. Time, the Titans, <laughs> Browns, Ravens, and Jaguars. Those are the four we're looking at for the four seed. All right? I think Amari Cooper's the best wide receiver out of amongst all, all out those of teams. All of them. Yeah, that's pretty right? fair. Okay. Now, tight end. And Chubb should be the best Mark, running back Mark of all Andrews, those teams. If tight, he's, uh, right. If tight he's end, you've got Mark Andrews, you've got Evan Ingram, and you've got David Njoku. Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is the best. But he hurt. I would take Njoku over Ingram, I but it's too. close. I would too. That's very close. <sighs> you taking Ingram over Njoku? I'm not saying I am. I'm I, I feel like they're about older. to say. I feel like they're about to say. They're same level. Yeah. I I like Njoku's upside a little more I, than I, Ingram this I year. I think that I think the Joku causes more of a mismatch than Evan Ingram does. The Njoku that we saw with Joe Flacco. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, right, right. that's what I'm talking about. Is that about. the guy who's? And it's not his fault. The system and the quarterback <laughs> for this for this he has he has not looked with Deshaun like he did with Joe Flacco. For this exercise, I'm guessing that that's the, the Joku we talking about. So running and now running back, it's Nick Chubb, it's Derrick Henry, and it's um, Tony Tony Pollard. Pollard, and it's Travis at the end. I would even with the risk of of Chubb, I would put him no worse than second on that list. I oh, still sure. put him at NTN. It's, yeah. it's just it's Pollard. between yes. him and Derrick Henry, right? And if, if and if Chubb's <laughs> Chubb, he's better than Derrick. I'd take him over Derrick Henry. Right I now. would as a as a running back, yes. yes. But for the team, that's where I'm getting worried because. Baltimore run is the ball. Yeah. And Cleveland seems like they're trying to get away from that. Now, I like – now, Baltimore does not have good wide receiver depth. So, they're going to use – Tennessee the, <laughs> has the edge of these four teams in terms of wide receiver depth. Yes. They have, I, I like their depth better than the Browns' depth. D-Hop, Ridley, Traylon Burks. Because I'd rather have uh, – Ridley is is better than Judy. Than Judy. Yes. Up until this point. Oh, yeah. Up until this better. point, Yes. And Traylon Burks, you, you take that upside over. Elijah Moore's got no upside, I think. Stop that. Come on now. Stop that. <laughs> Stop. Don't do that. Cause I, cause you think it, he's got upside? I feel like he had missed opportunity, and that's partially on Phillip. Well, he's going to get fewer opportunities. Yeah, that's right. No, it's a shame. I, I think it's tough. <laughs> I think in the end, I would probably go Browns four. Um, I think those four teams are all pretty close. For the four, for like, I think four through seven is tough. But then you got to then you got to throw a guy like Keith Mitchell in there who was He's nice. Dangerous. I take If they had Would one, you take him over Jerome Ford? I would. Now he didn't play a lot last year, but when he did, he looked special. You take him over Jerome Ford? What yeah. are we doing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at the I'm trying to put the whole thing We're breaking together. Breaking it down. I'm trying to put the whole thing together. All right, give me the Browns at 4, man. What are you doing? <laughs> I would, I would put the Browns at 4. All right, we're going Browns, Browns at 4. four. Browns at 4. All right, so now Let's we're... Let's keep finishing ra- it out. We might as well just finish it out here. So now we're Ravens, Jaguars, Titans. I'd put the Ravens five. Uh, I would go... I would go Ravens five, Jags six, Titans seven for me. Do the Steelers creep into this at all with two backs, Jalen Warren and Najee Harris? Well, let's, all right, let's, let's compare the Steelers to, say, the Jaguars. All right, Christian Kirk and Pickens. I'd rather have Pickens. Yes. Yes. But, and neither team has great wide receivers. <laughs> Who's the Jags' number two Gabe wide receiver? Davis. Gabe Davis. Oh, right now, the Steelers don't have a number two. Van Jefferson. It's Van Jefferson. Well, Gabe Davis is better than Van Jefferson. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, the Jaguars have a better tight end. Engram's better than Friar Muth. Yes. At running back, I think Etienne's a little better than, than um, uh, Najee. Okay. But they got Jalen Moore. Who is the other back in Jackson? It's close. Tank Bigsby is their backup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the dude from Auburn. It's close. But the Steelers, like Pickens is special. The rest of their guy, like they, their backfield, it's a nice combo. And then Najee, they got nothing else. Najee Harris just, he hasn't been what it, I thought he would be. All right, we got, are we, Titans or or the Ravens are definitely five. We all agree Ravens are right, five. Right, we agree Ravens five. I said Ravens five, yeah. No? All right. Five is? The, I'm still the Titan thing still got me a little bit. Titan, I, Titans versus Ravens. I, the Titan, listen, that receiver, and if, it, it just depends on how you look at Tony Pollard, and that's the yeah. thing. He had a down year, but two years ago he was really special. So, well, the Ravens have a big edge at tight end over the Titans. That's true too. At running back, it's it's give Pollard. Me the, for, give, I'd go with the Ravens. Yeah, just give me the Ravens. <laughs> so Ravens five. I'd listen to the Titans here. Six, six Titans, Titans, Jags, or Steelers. Who else is there? The Bills, the Jets, the nah. Colts. Ooh, see, now the Jets. Have <laughs> yeah, like the Jets. We forgot about the Jets. <laughs> once you get to six. Brees Hall, Mike Brees Williams, Hall. and Garrett Wilson is nasty. Brees Hall and Garrett, Garrett Wilson is legit. Yeah. Garrett Wilson is better than anybody on the Titans. He's better than any wide receiver on the Jags. He's be- I take him over Pickens with the Steelers. For me, you guys with me on that or no? Uh, yeah. As the total pack, I think Pickens is a better receiver, I think. But Garrett Wilson isn't quite the knucklehead that Pickens right. is. Right, right, right. So if you're making me pick one, uh, I take yeah. Garrett Wilson. I'm taking Garrett Wilson. I'm taking Garrett Wilson. And, By, bias reasons, too. And I'm, I'm taking Brees Hall over Derrick Henry for me. I'm taking him over Pollard. <laughs> I'm taking him over Etienne. I'm taking him over the Steelers combo. I would put the Titans six to <laughs> seven because I think the Titans have more depth. And you guys haven't mentioned the Chiefs yet. Not sure if they creep in. By at reason. Any point, but I just want to no. make sure. You asked teams, you <laughs> forgot. I actually, Patrick Mahomes, that, special, that much more special. I actually would take, I would take the Jets, Jets over, over the, the Titans. Titans. I would. I, I think, think I would, Titans, too. I think the Titans have more depth. I think I would, too. Who, yeah, but Mike Williams, I know he's hurt a lot. A lot. He, if, 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 who's the Titans number two again? Gabe, Ridley. Oh, uh, Ridley. And Ridley's been hurt. I mean, I... I think from a production standpoint, I would take the Jets. And, I, the Jets. and yes, we're talking about just weapons, but the quarterback yeah. just has right, to factor. Jets, six. The Jets yeah, yeah. factor. Aaron Rodgers over Will Levis. Well, but you, can't, you gotta leave that I, out. I know, but at the end of the day, no, they're going to be but more they, productive this, for that reason. Matter, it's, it, you got to judge them as if they had the same quarterback. Jets. I'd still take the Jets. <laughs> All right. They're, so the Jets, six. So that means Titan, seven. If we're that close. Yeah. Titans, seven over the Steelers. Yeah, I think we're in agreement on that. Seven. Titans. So then so we're going to the is either the Steelers or the Jaguars. You got the Bills still. You got the Chiefs. Are we really disrespecting the Chiefs? Well, like who this? can we throw out? Okay, let's see the Chiefs. <laughs> the Chiefs Bills, Bills don't make They the got top. Marquise no, Brown and, and, Ra- and Rasheed Rice, Travis Kelsey, and Pacheco. And Pache- That's I mean, good. Like that. But, I think uh, we're so, undervaluing the Chiefs a little bit. Uh, we are. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. are. <laughs> it's a little, it's some disrespect because right, you, you got, you go got the best little. tight end of all who did time. We ju- who do we just put seven? The, the Titans. Titans. Okay. So let's compare the Titans to the Chiefs. Pacheco or, or Pollard? Pacheco. I'm taking Pacheco. Pacheco. Wide receiver one. I, I thought Rasheed Rice was very, I don't know. He's in some trouble here. I don't <coughs> know what's going to happen. But for now, he's on the team. I don't think he's going to miss the year, I don't think. I, I would rather, I would honestly rather have, this may be a, a, a crazy Kelsey. statement, I would rather have Rasheed Rice than any of those receivers. <laughs> This year now, that's Scotter. That's ridiculous. That's just my opinion. That's yeah, ridiculous. I that's that. my that's opinion. Ridiculous. I thought he showed a lot of progress. <laughs> I actually will put him third. Those, okay, but how much of that progress is because who's throwing the ball to him? I mean, you, we like, got to call this thing even. You got to as if they I have. Hear you. If Rasheed <laughs> Rice and, and but, Hop have the same quarterback, but Hopkins is old. Okay. So what? He's like thirty-two. But we're doing it for right. Moment. But we're doing it. For I know right we're now. doing it for projecting ahead, and I'm projecting it. And then Travis Kelsey. It's a uh, landslide over yeah, the Titans tight yeah, end. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably put the Chiefs there. I, I actually put the Chiefs there. <laughs> yeah, I the think I'll put the Chiefs there. Jason, right. we talk well, into it? No. Uh, so now but Chiefs 7, I'm Chiefs 7, eight. Titans 8. So who can we throw out? Who's not going to make the list? The Bills, the Bills are not, not going to make, make the list. The Bills ain't making the list. Who else did you have there, Mike? Who are we forgetting? The Steelers, <laughs> the Bills, and the Jaguars. There's got to be one of the team, though. 
No, we have two spots left. And well, I the made Colts. 11, All right, so Steelers, grand. Jaguars. Colts, yeah. Steelers, Jaguars. Pickens and, over Kirk. And, I mean, Jags. He didn't make one for the Colts, so should we go through the Colts? All right, so let's go. So yeah. top wide receiver. You got Pickens for the Steelers. You got Pittman for the Colts. You got Kirk for the Jags. I'd actually take Pittman over any of those guys. I'd take Pickens over. I'd take Pickens over, over Pittman. Pittman. Yes. Yeah, I go Pittman. Do you want to hear the Colts step chart real quick? <laughs> I'll read you yeah, on a yeah. graphic, but Jonathan Taylor and Trey Sermon are your two running backs. Go Bucks. Pittman, Josh Downs, and Alec Pierce, your top three receivers. That's good. And your tight ends are Kyle Granson and Mo Ali Cox. Granson was a rookie last year. Well, I like their number one running back, their number one receiver. I do too. I mean, Jonathan Taylor is better than any skill position on uh, a guy on Jacksonville and better than any sp- skill position guy on uh, Pittsburgh. <coughs> I think you I might be probably... under- you undervaluing ETN a little bit. Not saying he's Jonathan, he's not Taylor. Than Jonathan Taylor. No, he's not better. No, he's than a good back. Yeah. I-, I hear you, but he's not. Uh, I-, I think I would put the Colts next. I'd put the Steelers next. You break the tie. Tiebreaker. Tie Steelers, Colts, or, or Jaguars. Or Jaguars. Let me see the Jags again. Uh, Steve pulls the Jags. It's ETN, Bigsby, Gabe Davis, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Devin Duvernay, Parker Washington, Evan Ingram, and DeGuara, your tight end. I just don't see how that's better than the Colts. They're a little better at tight end. They're, the Colts are better at wide receiver one. The Colts are better at running back. That's true. That is true. And then Colts for Steelers. I I think I will put the Colts in there. What about Colts for Steelers? Colts. Colts? Okay. So I Colts so. go, what is it, nine? Nine, yep. And who goes ten, Steelers or Jags? Steelers. I'm with you. Jason, you're on Steelers. I had Steelers higher than Colts. So, all right, so there you go. Colts nine, Steelers ten. So we did a YouTube wow, poll. Wow, Jags didn't even make the top ten. We did a YouTube poll, by the way. You guys were higher on the Browns. Than everyone else. Then YouTube? What? Then YouTube. YouTube. That's a first. The, the live YouTube chat. Wow. Had them 10% top three, 39% top five, 40% top 10. Well, we had top five. Well, yeah, but the majority, well, 1% by 1%, percent but the most of all the categories voted on. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense, Mike, because 49% combined had them in the top five. Because you have to combine top three and top five. I guess you're right. I I guess guess you're right in that sense. But it's still under 50, right? It was 10-39? 10-39, correct. I'm shocked. Where do – let's see the top five again. Yeah, top five, you guys went with Houston, Miami, Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Baltimore. Three of the four AFC North teams, by the way. And, so, and they had them out of the top five? Right. I mean, you, you can make the case for Baltimore ahead of Cleveland. Right, I don't they're agree they're still five. in the top five. five. So who's, so then who do we six. have at six? Six, the Jets, the Chiefs, the Titans, the Colts. I'm not putting the Jets above the Browns. No. I'm not putting any of these I mean, teams above the Browns. By the way, who'd you take, Garrett Wilson or Amari Cooper? Gear. Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson. Garrett. Garrett Wilson. Yeah. And I take Brees Hall over Nick Chubb only be, this year. Only because, Garrett, only because Garrett is younger. That's the only reason. Like so that. it's Garrett over Amari Cooper is a slight edge for the Jets. And I because of Nick Chubb's uncertainty. Brees Hall. And Brees Hall you put ahead of Chubb. And that's why maybe you can make the argument for the Jets. I guess. Now beyond that, the Jets don't have much. I take right. Mike Williams over Judy. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Williams' best has certainly been better than Judy. I'd Maybe rather we need to reevaluate. This. I'd actually rather have Judy. <laughs> I'd rather um, Mike Williams. I think I'd I take that. Mike Williams. Brown's got a big edge at tight end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Jets don't have a tight end, but uh, and the Jet, Jet. Who's the Jets' number two running back? Uh, he has a weird last name. Oh yeah, yeah. Where uh, do we put the Israel Jets? Akabanda, yes. or whatever? Yes. Do we have them six? We had the Jets six. Six, yeah. Jets six, yeah. I mean, it's close. I, I guess you could. I mean, if you you could make you an make argument for the for Browns Baltimore to be six. You could. You could. But I, I think it's very close between actually the Jets, do the we, Ravens, and the Browns. Are, for do you think we coming from this from a bias standpoint? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so we're, either. We're, you know, it's not like it's <laughs> J and G on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> or Earl. These poor men catching strays out minding their own business. I mean, you, you could, listen. If it was JG the, and Earl on here, four or probably five, been number one. Four, <laughs> five, and six, I, any way you want to put that order, yeah. I, I respect it. 
Well, we asked Twitter as well. I put it out this morning. Yeah. So I want to read you just a couple of Twitter responses before we move on to our 100% certain would be a star before they ever played conversation. But, Steve, you take tag board here. A couple answers. First one comes from Mike Paris said, hinges on the health of Chubb. If he can return to form, it's a top five unit. Next up was Good Beast. Only teams that have a better unit are Miami and Houston. Maybe the Jets and Jacksonville. And I'm not all that sure Houston is better than us. We have a better tight end by a long shot. Assuming Chubb is at least as good as Mixon. But, yeah, they have a better wide How do you have here. a better tight end by a long I, shot? I might have said you sleeping on Dalton Schultz. Dalton Schultz and David good. Njoku, are, there's not much of a difference between those two. And Jackson, I, Njoku's had one good year. One. Only teams better, Miami and Houston. You're forgetting Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati for sure is better. Maybe the Jets and, and Jacksonville for sure is not. We didn't put Jacksonville in our top ten, right? That was the no, team. No, we left yeah. them out. All right, next one. We have CBB. I mean, we, get, we didn't just go through that quickly. We really thought about it. We weren't – doesn't mean we're right, but you know, we, we, we took a lot of time thought, with that. Yeah. We, you know. Uh, when it, uh, this is from CB, CBB Dynasty BK. When they're all healthy <clears throat> for running backs, top three, receivers, top ten, somewhere for tight ends, top five. I think he did that individually. And we got one more. Yeah. Or is that Browns are not top five that in tight end. <laughs> in the AFC, You don't think are. so? Oh, in the AFC? Yeah. yeah, right, AFC, right, right. yeah. I'm trying to think of five tight ends. I was thinking the whole league. But Kelsey, no, Andrews. a lot of good tight ends are in the NFC. Yeah. I'll tell you what, man. Houston. Uh, it's nasty. It's incredible how fast they flipped it. Mm. Like, yeah. think about where Houston was just a couple of years ago with the Deshaun mess and everything else. Well, in the end, it all comes down it to, comes down to the quarterback. C.J. Stroud. Yeah, they got the quarterback. If the oh, Panthers yeah. had not blown it, yeah. if the Panthers had taken C.J. Stroud, it's a whole different story. Oh, I totally agree. But they didn't. Yeah. And look where Houston is now. Right. Look, look how fast they flipped it. And now we have them top two. And they have the quarterback and we have them yeah. number one. We put number one, right? Yep. Yes. In weapons. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on to our next topic, and this one is brought to us by Game Time. If you ever had a frustrating time buying a ticket, especially if it was for an early season Major League Baseball game, you weren't sure if the seats would be good, you couldn't find a great last-minute deal, there were no tickets you wanted at the prices you want, well then, we have to look at Game Time. It is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer you get to first pitch. They have priority last-minute deals that can save you up to 60% on buying those last-minute tickets. They have flash deals, zone deals, all in pricing, so you don't get hit with that late fee. When you look at a ticket, it says it's 24 bucks, and you go to check out, and it really costs 44 Game Time takes that out of the equation. Plus, their game time ticket coverage makes sure your purchase is covered with the most flexible uh, customer service policy in the entire ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Just download the app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Once again, just create an account, redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Mike, I think before we move on to the next topic, we have to acknowledge something that's been ignored so far. I'm a little surprised Tyvis hasn't brought this up as a proud Buckeye. Uh, very embarrassing that Mike is wearing a Miami I saw I saw University. I saw that earlier. Like, how could you be and wearing I wanted, that? I was going to ask why. him about it. I will tell you why. But, yeah. uh, free swag is free swag. So, you're gonna wear <laughs> so if somebody gives you a Steelers jersey, you're going to wear it? No, but who has an issue with Miami? It's not like he's wearing Michigan. It's Miami. Now, that's where Mike shows his, his being new to Cleveland. What? You want to explain it to him? Well, I know. The, the game back in the day, Ohio State, Miami, At, National Championship. I, like, hand to God, uh, God's honest truth, yeah. that is the best game I've ever seen in my life. I was there. I was covering it. That's the best football game I've ever seen in my life. Best game of any kind. Just any spit it in my face. I'm sorry, buddy. Well, Ohio State. They that won, was, though. Th- there was a game-winning I'm celebration. I'm not saying that. No, there was a game-winning. Not, I played there for four years. We had some really, really, Nothing really like good that. games. Nothing oh, like that. Like, uh, I don't know, like uh, 2013 against the team up Nothing. north. Really Nothing. came down to a two-point conversion. Nope. Pretty that darn good game. team was supposed to game. be the best team ever, yep. Davis. So what? No, I'm telling you, that is the best football game I've ever seen in my life. There were fireworks going off. Miami was celebrating I'm, on the field. The we game beat, was over. We beat Alabama. It wasn't. We beat Alabama. I'm telling you, man. We beat 
Three that Heisman game, Trophy winners in a row. Double overtime. Or not winners, but. Double overtime for the national championship. Yeah. Best game I've ever seen. Just hmm. spit in my face. Best game. I'm it sorry, Willis McGahee. Willis McGahee. Right? Yeah. yeah. That was, that was, that was, a, that was nasty. nasty. Hit. Oh, my God. Nasty hit. Yep. So, that I will reiterate. Phenomenal game. You cannot wear Miami you, anymore. If anyone sends you free, free swag, I will wear it. But <laughs> you just said you wouldn't wear Steelers. Well, that crosses the line. But so does Miami. Why, my, Miami does not cross no, the line. No, Ohio State Miami. fans no. hate Miami. Wait a minute. Where did you go to college, that Miami? That game was 22 years ago. Where did McNuggets oh, go to, fans where did you go to college at? That's well, the question. They beat uh, Miami. My they boy, didn't beat the Broncos. My boy first coaching job at the University of Miami. Stop it. I can't. You Tomorrow see, see might me. Be I, Ravens I, gear. I personally, I could never wear another college gear. Like I just. Well, he didn't go to a D one school. So Mike, what? Mike, Mike, here's what's <laughs> off limits: Michigan, Steelers, Ravens. Yeah. Ravens. Would, wouldn't touch that. Warriors. Warriors are still off limits. It's still too fresh. Wouldn't yeah. touch it. That's it. And it, what else am I missing? Is there Chauncey anything? Billups in Yankees? Detroit. There are a lot of people wear Yankee stuff around here. Detroit Pistons. But I see people in Steelers stuff all the time. Yeah. There's a lot of Steelers fans in the area. I, I, I mean, Yankee, I, if you want to put Yankees on the list, fine. But I, that's, other than that, the evil empire. Where do you want to wear? Go Cel- ahead, Mike. Celtics. Flags, I, wore, I had a Celtics hat in high school, and I got scolded. I had to take Mike's wearing back. Ravens tomorrow. <laughs> on, on Monday, he'll be wearing a Confederate flag I'm, shirt. I'm wearing a brown shirt if it helps. This one, <laughs> this one Jason's wife actually. Oh, the Flacco up. one? In Flacco, I just happened to pick it on today, mm-hmm. yeah. That's funny. Uh, so I'm wearing a brown shirt, so that got to okay. make up for it. All right, today's question. Speaking of colleges, this kind of goes back to college and projecting future stars. We'll start with you, Tyvis, and we'll start with your good one first. We'll go around the horn, then we'll go back. Well, let's explain. Are we explaining it? I'm going to explain it, yes. Right. I'm just telling Tyvis to go first. Who was the last player, and LeBron James and Miles Garrett are ineligible for this discussion. <laughs> and the chat, if you're listening, please drop some submissions for your own answers in the chat. We'll read these at yeah. the end. Who was the last player you were 100% certain <coughs> would be a star, Tyvis, before they ever stepped on, their, on the field or the court, whatever their appropriate playing turf is, for their professional debut? Who were you 100% confident would be a star who turned out to be good? Well, I, for this exercise, I, ref, I took away my, my biases because it was obviously Denzel Ward, but I'm not going to say him because <laughs> I don't want to hear the chat go crazy and all of this jazz. So for this, I went with Martin Emerson. I remember when they drafted Martin Emerson, they were like, people was like, why did they do that and those type of things? But the one thing that I saw about him is that he had led the SEC in PBUs. And me being a former DB, I, that told me that he knew how to play the football well. And when you get into the NFL, one of the things that bothers a lot of young DBs is when that ball go up, they get nervous. I mean, it's, it's the funniest thing in the world. They get nervous. They start grabbing, pulling, don't know how to react. But – for a guy that led the SEC and PBUs, I mean, I knew he knew how to play the ball. So when the ball went up and they went at him, I knew he could either get a PBU or he can get a pick. So far, he's turned out to be 100% exactly what I thought. Um, he had that dog mentality that I knew that you needed to succeed in the NFL. And he's made plays on the ball, PBUs and picks. So it's not shocking to me to see him where he's at. Jason, you're up next. Well, that was a good one. Oh, we're doing all the, the ones all that the hit goods. and then all we're the We're going to do all the after. hits and then we'll do the misses. <coughs> okay. So, Jason, you're up next. Who were you 100% would be a star before they were stepped in the field and were right? C.C. Sabathia. Uh, Indians took him in the first round. And I was I went down. I forget where he was pitching. He was in the minors somewhere. The Mahoney Valley Scrappers. No, that's not where. <laughs> was it 98 or was it 99? It was after that. Oh. I think it was like Akron. Okay. I think he was in Akron. Yeah. When I went, I went down and did a story on him when I was a snot-nosed slapdick reporter just trying to figure out my way, which I still am, I guess. Yeah, it was interesting. And guy. I heard a story. I vividly remember this. When he was first drafted, I forget who was telling me this, he didn't know how to grip a fastball. He just held the ball in his hand. Like they told him, like they wanted to see his grip, and he just picked up the ball and threw it. <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> But the size, I looked at this dude, I'm like, this guy is massive. This guy's going to be phenomenal. And, I mean, I had no scouting chops or anything. I just looked at the size and looked at the first-round pick and thought, well, he's got to be good. And I remember how hard he threw. And, <coughs> and I always was really excited to see him. And he had a great rookie year, played on a terrific Indians team. They called him up. Um, and, and I think he won, like, 17 games as a rookie, 15, 17 games. He played on a team with a lot of talent around him. And he's a Hall of Famer in my book. I think he'll be in the Hall of Fame. And, and I just, that was the one guy. There aren't many. That was the one guy. By the way, um, 
the reason I said Mahoney Valley is because um, when I was start my first professional radio job mm-hmm. was in 1999 as the play-by-play voice of the Batavia Buckdogs. I've mentioned this before. Sabathia was drafted in 98. He played in rookie ball in 98. In 99, he was whatever, young. I mean, yeah. he, could, he was like 19 Drafted years old. Drafted him out of high school, so yeah. yeah. And in 99, so our team made the playoffs. And in the play, four teams made the playoffs in the Penn League. And in the first round of the playoffs, we had a best of three series against the Mahoney Valley Scrappers, which was the Indians team. And Sabathia had been in the, in the, so in those days, it was rookie ball and then short season A and then so on and so forth. Rookie ball and, and short season A are kind of done now. But, but. They called Sabathia up the last, like, two weeks of the season to pitch for Mahoning Valley. Mm -hmm. And so we hadn't seen him because we played them a lot during the season, but we hadn't seen him all year. And I remember going to Mahoning Valley and for the playoffs, and he, I saw him get on the mound, and I had no idea who he was at the time because I only knew the guys on our team. And we had some major league players. In 99, we had Marlon Byrd, who was a longtime major leaguer. And I saw Sabathia get on the mound, and – Mahoney Valley just started as a minor league team around that time. Mm-hmm. So the place would be, was sold out. It was like 5,000 fans, which for a low A-ball team That's is lot. pretty good. And it was packed, and Sabathia went on the mound, and I saw him in that first thing. I was like, oh, my God. Right? Because there were guys, you know, most of the pitchers at A-ball didn't look like that. Right. And that was – so I love that one because he was phenomenal. Yeah. I think he had – I think he pitched like 15 innings for them and had 30 strikeouts. Something yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. I, I remember watching. I think it was in Akron. Head of yeah. Akron. I went and watched right. him when he was at Akron. Just a massive human being on the mound. Oh, my God. Did that was you, probably 2000. He wasn't the minus long. it took him to he got to the pros to learn how to properly throw a fastball? When they drafted him, he, yeah. They said, like, they were looking. <laughs> so, he threw fastballs. He just picked it up. Like, just a Five monster. fingers. Just five fingers and go. I agree. He's a Hall of Famer. I think That's that, ridiculous. I, I know. I, I, by know. the way, I think that late career renaissance at the end. Remember with the Yankees, he was going down the tubes. Yeah. And then he had two years at the end where he bounced back and pitched really well. Yeah. <laughs> he got put him over the top. The top. I, I, think, think I think he should be in the Hall of Fame, I hope he is. Yeah, I hope so, too. What a great guy. We had a chance. Phenomenal. To, I know you know him, but we had a chance to meet him. I don't know if you were in the studio the time he came here. No. But he was awesome. Yeah. Were you here, Tyvis, that day? No, I wasn't here that awesome, day. Awesome, awesome, awesome. He was, couldn't have been nicer. Yeah, that's I mean, what, such a good dude. Earl, Earl was telling me the story about it. He had, yeah, Earl it was so fun house, to meet him. So, yeah. that Tremendous was, that was really ambassador for the game. I, I wish that – it feels like the Indian, Guardians, Indians, Cleveland organization could do more with him. He, he was here. I know. He was originally here. Like, yeah. I know if you ask anyone about Sabathia, they're going to cite him with the Yankees. Like, they'll, pair him, they'll th- remember him as a Yankee. He'll probably go into the hall as a Yankee. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but he's Cleveland's. Yeah, no doubt. And then remember those couple of months from Milwaukee? <laughs> Just, yeah. That was incredible. He what pitched he did like every other day. That was insane. <laughs> Not to go get All right, Mike, my, my guy is also, was also a Cleveland Indian slash guardian, and that's Francisco Lindor. Mm. I remember meeting Francisco Lindor. I was, in, I was in spring training. What was Lindor's rookie season? I don't remember off the top of my head. Was it 2012? Lindor's rookie season was... What was his rookie season? Because I met him before that. When, wasn't it the playoff his, year? His first 12. season was 2015. Yeah. Oh, Jeez. oh I was thinking of the other playoff year, 2012. Yeah. Yeah, 2015? Wow. It was that long. Okay, so it must have been 20... It was either – so in 2013, we, I, I was in spring training covering the Guardians for the radio station. I can't remember what year it was, but it was before Lindor went to the majors. So it was probably 2014. Spring training 2014 was probably the first year he got to be in camp with the big league mm-hmm. team. And he was – I think he was 19, 20, whatever he was. He was a little skinny kid. And he came into the at, – at, and you know this, Jason. You got that little closet where people do interviews oh, yeah. at, the, at the Guardians facility. And I remember he came in there to sit, and he sat down with Dustin and I, and I was like, we knew he was a good prospect. But when I had a chance to talk to him, I was like, wow. This guy's like 20 years old, and he is special. Yep. Like, he talks like he's been a major leaguer for six years. He was special. He was electric. I'm still sad. I know – that the Guardians had to do what they had to do. Uh, I'm still saying they traded Lindor. And Lindor had a bad year his first year at the Mets. And he's not as great a player as we thought he, as I thought he'd be there. But he's still really good. I, and I'd still love to have him on this team. I mean, I'd love to have him on this team. But 
it's they nailed that. It's incredible. Like they got Jimenez for it. Jimenez yeah. signed the extension. Hey, it was a good Lindor trade. Wouldn't. It worked it was out. A good trade for both. But in sides. a perfect world, I'd still love to have Lindor on the sheet. Sure. I, it would be nice if you had him somehow had Jimenez at second, Lindor at short, oh, and Jose God. at third. That'd be beautiful. You know, and what was special about Frankie is he loved Cleveland when he was here. I don't think that was an act, Jason. Do you? You think it was an act? I don't think it was an. I. Everybody says the right thing. Okay, but he but, but, but he special. backed it up. He yeah. went to other sports. Yeah, he was he was the ambassador for the All Star game. When you're drafted by an organization, yeah. you come up and it's the only thing you know. Yes, of course. He was a it's great example. Special. He he was a good example for other athletes to follow. Yeah, even no. if it was even if there was some phoning it, it like, hey, I just got to do this. But you didn't you, you couldn't tell because he embraced it. Yeah, he did. Like Joe Hayden did. H- Joe Hayden did too. Hayden Joe Hayden did. was awesome with that. Yeah, and then it was a disgrace. You know who else did? Cover. Baker Mayfield. He did. You're right. He did. That's fair. Uh, but in the end, so I'll go with Lindor. Yes. Now we're going to start with you and go on the reverse because I want to make sure we get some of these fan submissions in. We've got a bunch of these. Yeah. Well, who are you 100% certain would be a star who did not turn this out? This was be a, a hard star? one for me. Like, I thought Brandon Whedon, I didn't think Brandon <laughs> Whedon was going to be a star, but I thought he was going to be good. Mm-hmm. There's some other guys I thought would be good that weren't. And I was thinking about who I was star. It took me a while to think of it, and then I got it. And this guy actually was a star briefly, very briefly, for like a year or two. Danny Salazar. Oh, yeah. When Danny, with all the pitchers, and the Guardians have had, in just the, the 13 years I've been covering the Guardians, they've had more good pitchers, more all-star caliber pitchers than any other team should have. But when I first saw this guy come to the big leagues, I thought he was going to be the he best of the bunch. He was electric. Electric. His strikeout, like, look at his strikeouts. 688 strikeouts in 591 innings. Yeah. Do you know how good that is? Yeah. That is crazy to have... Almost 100 more strikeouts than innings. That's insane. And then the first time the, the Indians went to the playoffs after I moved here was 2012. That's why I was thinking of the playoffs. And he pitched in a wild card game against the Rays. Yeah. I remember and he that. pitched well. Yep. They lost because they didn't score. But he pitched a hell of a game. He had electric stuff. You found out down the line he wasn't maybe the toughest guy behind the scenes. Who yep. knows what the truth is? No, that's the and truth. And he just couldn't. And the injuries killed his career. And he's out of baseball, I think. Oh, yeah, he is. And maybe he's playing in some you know, come other back. foreign league. He, he came come. back with the Yankees and played in the minor leagues for them like yeah. two years ago. But the guy, but he was an all-star, I think, once. And he had a couple of years with really good numbers. But the, I, I, thought, he, I thought he was going to be an absolute stud for years. Yeah, he flamed out. And if he flamed out, yeah. Jason, well, I, you're up next. I... I'm going to do one real quick that I didn't give Mike that I thought about this morning that's probably a better answer, and then I'll give him I'll give the real <laughs> answer. Courtney Brown, I thought, was going to be a mm. beast. Uh, Brown's a lot of defense I, I had the 99 jersey. Yeah, I thought Courtney <laughs> Brown was going to be a monster, but I didn't think about that until this morning on the drive-in. So I the forgot, one I gave Mike. I forgot all about him. Dewan Wagner, when the Cavs took Oh, Dewan that Wagner. was such oh a good God. one, too. Dewan Wagner, sixth overall, scored 100 points in a high school game. Yes, he did. Uh, I thought him and LeBron were going to be terrific running mates together. And unfortunately, I think he would have been, but uh, he had ulcerative colitis that was not diagnosed until later on. And just it was health more than anything, I think, with oh, him. Really? It just It just derailed his entire career. But just electric player, could score at will. Uh, back in the time before scoring has oh become God. what it is today. Look how young LeBron yeah, looks I know, there. Right? That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Who could they have taken at six if they hadn't taken it? Somebody that turned out to be a great player? Uh, what draft was that, 2005? No, it was the uh, 02 draft. I think it was 2002. They took him sixth overall. It was the year before uh, they they got LeBron. After Yeah, uh, this is – I mean, Amari Stoudemire went two picks later. <coughs> Ron Butler was four picks later. Drew uh, Mark Stout by Meyer was a hell of a player for Ooh, Nate 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 was in that draft. Yeah. Karam and Prince. and I don't think it was a bad pick. Yeah, it was just, just it was health. Yeah, yeah, health took him down. Tayshawn Prince. But yeah, Dewan, I loved watching Dewan Wagner play. Dewan mm. Wagner and Courtney Brown, those two. Mm. Thomas, you, you kind of you, you kind of messed up this this one. I did. So I'm a I could I could what pivot from tell it. Tell us yeah, well, tell us what you picked. You messed up because Well, I actually I sent Mike two. I sent Mike two. Did, well, use a, use a second one then. 
Because he said OBJ is his first one. Yeah, because he was OBJ was going to be the th- last Thano piece because uh, you said in Cleveland and it didn't. Well, work I out. think we'd all agree. We all thought, OB, OB, oh, at least I did. The, we all thought OBJ was going to be great. Right, he was just a guy. Well, my other one was Johnny Manziel. I actually thought Johnny Manziel oh, wow. would be really good. I never believed in him. I did I for, never for, for, in him. for for when he was coming out. I was like, you know what? No, a guy with Kyle Shanahan that 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 can work out. Like he he'll put him in the right situations. He, he's mobile enough. I thought maybe the mobility of him being able to get away from stuff will actually help him succeed. He'll buy his receivers time. Mm-hmm. I thought it would be good. And the man never even watched films. So Remember that first game against the Bengals, how bad he was? Well, I don't know if it was the first. Whatever yeah. game it was when he took the ball and threw it backwards <laughs> over his head, I knew they were screwed. Well, this was, this was at the draft. Like what, when they drafted him, I said, oh, yeah, we and good. And I got I to admit this. What's funny is, for months, <laughs> as you guys know, remember that. As you guys know, I mentioned this yesterday. You take it. Yeah, he was. <laughs> uh, he was probably stoned. At the moment. I mean, probably he was hey, on coke or hey. whatever. But as you guys know, and I mentioned this on the show yesterday. In those days, we were talking <laughs> about the Browns draft from November to April. I mean, sure. that was the conversation yeah. every year. Yeah. And for months, everybody, like so many fans, wanted the Browns to draft Johnny. Dustin was on board. He wanted, to, and Dustin's usually really good with the draft. Like he's better than than most people would 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 figuring it out. Uh, but he wanted Johnny, and I was like, no, 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 no. He sucks. He sucks. He's never gonna. And then like two weeks before the draft, everybody <laughs> they talked to you. They, into it. they talked me into it, and I jumped on the bandwagon those last two weeks. And then we got drafted. I like everybody else got excited, and the guy was a total bum for the moment. <laughs> he threw the ball. Total bum. You know, you know D White pulled something like that. Where he threw the ball. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Last year he, yeah, he did. did. Yeah. Let yep. me read a couple fan submissions. Yeah. I'll get a read. Then we got Sean Merriman in the queue ready to hop on. But uh, <laughs> rated R said Kyrie it. Irving, who was another good one. Tequila Mockingbird said Joe Thomas. Kyrie's phenomenal. No, he said no, for the, it oh, would. The, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, the Joe Oreo Thomas one, I was definitely. But I really wanted Adrian Peterson at the uh, time. I can't lie about that. Loco Oreo <laughs> said Denzel Ward. Max Volick said Tyvis Powell. I'm not sure if that was for they're going to be a star, going to be a bust one time. <laughs> No, nah, he's talking about a show. star. Uh, Brad Dougherty also in there. B. Skrill said Deshaun Kaiser thought he was going to be great. I was wrong. Ooh, I, I knew he was. I didn't think I he knew he good. threw me. He threw me two picks in my last game. <laughs> I knew he wasn't going to be good. <laughs> Michael Youngman said I was a hundred percent confident in Manny Ramirez. I saw him as a minor leaguer in Canton. Good one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, LeBron James, Lindor, and Manziel. You can't say LeBron. That was part of the exercise that it was not LeBron. I, I'm just reading the comments. Well, don't read chat. it if they <laughs> break the rules. Uh, someone actually responded, Miles Garrett and LeBron were not eligible. So thank you, Corey Richmond. Thank for, you, Corey. Corey's uh, paying attention. Playing a part of that. Brad Dowdy and Mark Price were in there. Uh, Beecham says, Andre Miller, LOL. Uh, David Greenshield said, I knew Nick Chubb was going to be a stud. A uh, couple more. A couple for Wemby. Um, but I, I'm not sure that one necessarily counts. Wimby, this is Cleveland. It's supposed to be Cleveland. A couple more for Brad Dougherty. Dougherty. I'm gonna tell you. Dougherty. I'm gonna tell you a guy. Brad Dougherty. Keep I'm, calling him Brad Dougherty. I'm gonna tell you Dougherty, a guy the Browns drafted that I was like. And last one. And he turned says, out to be uh, good. Maurice Corret knew he was gonna be a stud. But he wasn't in the NFL. As much as we love and, Maurice, he wasn't in the NFL. And Jay says Trent Richardson. I knew he was gonna be a bum. So I didn't think that he would be that bad. Yeah. All right, let's get our guest in here. Wait, hold First, on. Oh, oh, Tyus, who's your guy real quick? It was sure. Alex Mack. When they drafted oh, Alex Mack, was good? I was like, who is that? Mm. And he turned out to be, he turned out to be really First, good. Though, a quick word from Robin Hood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA. Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this now through April 30th. Robin Hood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some quick legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 is validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing does involve risk, including losses. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. Robinhood IRA is available to U.S. customers in good standing. And Robinhood Financial LLC is a registered broker dealer. And with that, let's welcome in Lights Out himself, Sean Merriman, one of our favorite football guests to bring on the show. Sean, you got a big fight coming up this weekend, man. I know weigh-ins 
are tomorrow, and this looks like a hell of a card you guys got set up here. Well, it's going to be a fight again if, if, he's, if he says he's, he was good in football when I come on. So, uh, <laughs> Damn. Uh, is he talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. Wow. You know, I had to start right off the bat. Before the boy, I came on, I was like, every time somebody talk about somebody else good, you know he jumping in there, right? We Like, nobody else going to have that shot without everybody knowing how good he was, That's man. Right. So, listen, uh, I, w- I didn't have my own dance. You know, you were. Fun fact, I never recorded a sack, but do you know if I did, I had my, my sack dance ready? Do, what, do you know that? What, what I was going to go ching, ching, and then I will go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so you're going you to steal mine and Cam That's Newton's all at the same uh, time. I yeah, feel yeah, you. Yeah, you got to listen. When you see something good, you got to put them together and make it your own spin. No, no, for sure, man. Yeah, no, we, we got it. We got a huge fight coming up this Saturday. Uh, Lights Out Extreme Fight 15. We got 18 fights. So this, this is the biggest card we've ever had in the history of the company. Nice. Um, and, and I'm I'm excited about this one, man, because you see Danny Ramirez there, Richie Palomino uh, is our main event. These guys are vets. They're going to get after it. Um, another one to look at, the, the co-main event. That why, you guys, watch this kid, Lazaro Valdez, uh, Cuban hunter. This guy, like, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep him. He might be with us for a fight or two before he heads to the UFC. Uh, that that's going to be a big one. Gilbert Nakatani there is, is on his card as well. We're stacked up, man. This this is our, our biggest card. In fact, um, we got like four hours on Fubo Sports, Fubo TV this Saturday. So uh, if you guys got Fubo six six p.m. Pacific, check us out. Uh, we're lined up probably our, not a probably. Our, this is our biggest biggest card we've ever had. Well, I can watch it. I actually just got Fubo about a month ago because. It's the only way I can watch the Guardians game. So now I got all the extra, extra Fubo sports channels. So there you go. I'm locked in. I need to switch. Dude. You got to get the Fubo. Fubo's good. I like it. Uh, Sean, I'm curious. Speaking of sack dances, when you were a, you know, a kid, who, who had the, your favorite sack dance? I remember for me as a kid, I liked, even though I wasn't a Jets fan, I like the New York Sack Exchange and Mark Gastineau. Gastineau. I remember him. He had the great. I, I, yeah, G- Gastineau was good. Um, I used to like Derek Thomas, his, uh, his big swing. You know, remember the big swing at the bat he yep. used to have? Um, th- there was a couple guys, man, I, I think that would just have, have some really cool sack. That I think I think during that mid-2000s for me, like the time I played was the coolest. When, you know, my, mine and, and Jared Islands, you had DeMarcus Ware with the slam. So, I think that became more of a thing. Gastineau was was the one that started this thing out, right? Yeah. He, he's the one that kind of put the, the, the stamp on sack dances and, and really got the influence of me and, and, and a lot of us. Yeah. Did Lawrence Taylor have one? I don't remember him having one. I think one. so. I can't remember. I don't remember. No, Lawrence, 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 yeah, Lawrence Taylor didn't have one. Um there, there was a, you know, I, there was a bunch of dances, man. It's just, I, I don't think sack dances became a big thing until 2000, right? Um, yeah. what, what was, what was the D tackle there that played? Uh, actually, I, I almost broke his record to play for the Chargers. D tackle, um, God, that just slipped, slipped my mind. But he, you know, he had a, he had a really good sack dance. But I don't think sack dances got big, man, until the mid 2000s. Yeah. Hmm. Sean, I got a bone to pick with you. Oh boy, <laughs> no, it's serious. So, so listen to me. <laughs> The the NFL does the the hip drop tackle right and and, they, and I'm on Twitter or X and I see all the reactions and then I see Sean Merriman say it's not that bad you know this exactly. is it improves our game how can you sit there as a former defensive guy knowing that they doing this to us making their offensive heavy and actually applaud them for doing such a thing. They putting us at a disservice. And you and you agree with that? You, you you know what that comes from, man. To be quite honest, is so. I, and I really do feel bad for. I feel bad for these you know defensive players because there's so many rules already, and this just seemed like a, another one. But I said before, I think the NFL got this one right. If it wasn't so many other rules and, and, and stuff that, that doesn't make any sense, I get it, the helmet, the helmet stuff, but you can't hit a quarterback below, above his shoulder pads, but below his waist. There's, I mean, there's so many other rules that don't make any sense. But you got to understand with this hip drop tackle, man, the, the percentages of you getting hurt, the percentages of something bad happening, and more importantly, man, the runner can't stop. He can't stop it. 
right? He is nothing. He can't. He, he couldn't even drop to his knees and go straight to the ground because guess what? Somebody's full. Somebody's body. Another 210, 220 plus pound guy is dropping his weight. Is all his weight on the back of your legs, and there's nothing you can do about it. So in in my way, man, I love. Look, I'm I'm the hit you in the mouth guy, right? So I know when I said that, everybody was like, "What do you mean, lights out?" Said I said, "No, look, with this tackle in particular." The, the guy's defenseless. He can't do anything about it. So so you got to take it out because he can't protect himself in no way, shape, or form. So that that's it, it's people making a big deal about this is because of all the other rules, not this one. Yeah. Hmm. See, I disagree. All right, I disagree because naturally on a on a slant, Sean, as a DB, when they run a slant, I go make that tackle. I'm gonna drop my hips because I got to get him down on the ground. Like that's just how it goes. Yeah, no, look. I don't know any First other all, way. I don't understand any other way the, to get them down. The the D, the DBs, man, the DBs. I, I get a little bit more from, from that standpoint and why that has to happen. Like, I, I get that. Because of the weight issue, you got a big – like, when Andrews went down, I think it was a DB that tackled them. Or, I, I believe it was. Yeah, I think you but, were uh, the, right. tight end, Yeah, when tight end and Andrews went down. So, the DB, you're unmatched size-wise. But what I don't – really agree with is guys having that intention to having to go and do that because look if a guy gets an extra yard look you want to stop him and get by any means necessary i do i do still have that mentality stop a guy by any means necessary but there is a standpoint man where a guy cannot protect himself running as fast as he is there's over a 90 percent chance that something's going to happen and it doesn't have to be a major in, uh, injury but a guy is leaving the game from that tackle, man. So I, I never really – that one I just – we have well, – look, we have grades, man. Bo Jackson, right? What, what, what would Bo Jackson would have been without those type of tackles? You know, completely yanked his hip out of the socket. So my, this is my thing, man. I, I just think that getting rid of that one tackle was good for the game ultimately. Mm-hmm. Game of inches, Sean. Game of inches. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Game of inches. Yeah, that's that's what the DBs say when they don't want to tackle. But it's all good, man. I'm not even going. <laughs> Sean, what do you think of the Browns last year? The Browns defense, Jim Schwartz's impact on that, and I think a lot of people were left with a bad taste in their mouth the way that it ended against Houston. There was an awful performance in that playoff game. But just in general, your thoughts on where the Browns are and, and the direction they're going defensively and overall as a team? Look, d- defensively. It always makes me feel good because you got a top, I would say, top three player, defensive player in football, in Miles Garrett, right? So everything starts and, and, and finishes with him and his capabilities. Now, they had a lot of injuries. They had a lot of injuries last year, really on both sides of the ball. They had a lot of injuries. And so for them to even still be in that position, so I'm looking at the everything in, in hindsight and people are not really paying attention to the maneuvering, the the filling in the blanks, the guys having to step up and still finding ways to win. They they were one of the most injured teams in the NFL last year. Yeah. And they found a way to still get to where they were. So I know everybody's gonna say, Oh, you know, they didn't play well in, you know, against the Texans and all the bad stuff. You gotta think, Nick Nick Chubb went down, right? You don't you don't have you don't have Nick you know, the I would say top three running back in football and maybe maybe possibly the best. He goes down. You got defensive players that's gone down. And you still find a way to get there, man. That's a hell of a job by the coaching uh, staff. That's a hell of a job by, you know, the personnel staff and finding guys to bring in and bring out and find ways to still win football games. So there's a lot of upside, man, in Cleveland. The problem, the problem that you have with with a team like Cleveland is is people in the division that's getting better too, and that's that's the issue that they're going to have going forward. It's not them. I think they got a solid team. They got a really good team, actually. Well, you got teams that they're playing with in their division, playing against in their division, who's who's getting a lot better. Sean, I'm curious. You know, the Browns' defense. Obviously, teams are you know generally better at home, but the extreme difference for the Browns' defense, home and road, is is like crazy. We have the stats here. Let's bring this up. I mean, l- look at that difference. They gave up. Eight, they gave up seventeen and a half more points per game. At uh, on the road and all the numbers across the board, it's not a little different. I mean, it, it is a massive difference. How how do you explain where at home they're like an, an all time elite defense and on the road they're terrible? That look that that's no coincidence. That's no coincidence. And typically, when something like that happens, 
they need to start switching up their their regimen, their their preparation. Um, that you know, install instilling a different mentality when they go on the road. We had this thing where we we thrived on on being a road warriors, right? We we used to actually uh, you know before the games or before we go there, we say we're gonna go in your house, go in your refrigerator, eat what we want, put our foot up on your table, right? That's that was our that's what our mentality was when we right. went on the road. Like we're going to your house, going to your fridge, sit down on your couch and put our feet up. That, and so when you, that's a mentality that they have to instill with those guys in order to fix that. And if they don't fix that with that team that they have, it's going to be a major problem because that means you got to win out. That means you got to show out at home all the time. You can't have any slip ups no matter what. Sean, Sean Watson has not played at a consistently high level since he's been in Houston in, in 2020. So it's been three years that he's either been suspended sitting out, hurt, or, you know, not very effective. How confident are you that he can get back his career back on track at this point? I, I think this is a make-or-break year for him, right? It, it, it just has to be because the contract that he got, the contract that he received, you know, forget what you think about all the stuff he went through off the field. He didn't play, right? So, so anybody who hasn't been on the field and still get rewarded that contract was already risky enough. Forget all the other stuff he had for a second. Um, but the other that he hasn't been on the field. And so you go and make this jump, and, 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 and you the Browns are the ones who set the market for quarterbacks. Think about that. He, yep. they, he, he set, they set the entire market for, for Dak Prescott that's coming back up right now. They set the market for Lamar Jackson. They set the market for um, you know Josh Allen and Barrel. He set the market. And so if you think about that and see how those guys are performing and seeing how he's performing – that's where the issue lies. And so this is a make or break year for him. Um, you know, and outside of all the things he dealt with off the field, when you're talking about him as a football player, this may be it. Somebody taking another chance on him because I don't think there was going to be anybody in the NFL that made the, made the jump and take that risk like the Browns have. And I don't think there's going to be another one if he can't get it done. Sean, there's been a bunch of moves across the NFL this year. Um, as far as off-season trades and acquisitions, what's been your favorite one and that you was like, you know what, that team is special now? Man, um, I mean, the most recent one, I, I think was a great move by the Texans and getting mm-hmm. getting uh, um, Stephon Diggs. I, I think that people don't understand how um, how crucial that's going to be. This this is a Texans team who, who's already – was at that at that level where they where they contend. Now it really put them in contention. Right. Um, and so, Are you, you saying know, that having because that because ex- he went to Maryland? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> uh, no, no, just okay. I, I, it was the most recent one, but I think um, you know ultimately, man, there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of crazy not additions but subtractions this year that they got their teams just let cut or they moved on from. Um, you know, you look at the bills and you talk, I'm talking, you know, this is kind of stick with that, with that trade that happened. Look at the bills and how many guys got let go and moved on. And they, I mean, they got like, 10 to 12 guys that's gone yeah. off of that roster now who was active last year and starters crazy. Um, I would think the, the, the craziest moves this all season was the no moves by Dallas Cowboys. I, you know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> they, they, they have done absolutely nothing. In the off season, no. <laughs> and, and and you know, think about it. You're you're, you're and, and we just talked about teams getting better in your in your division. That's what the Brown. That's what the Browns is going to have to deal with coming up because teams in their division just got better. That's what's happening in Dallas. If the Commanders go out and get themselves a franchise quarterback, they're in trouble. They're, they're in trouble because now they brought in Bobby Wagner and brought in all these vets. They already had a wide receiver back there. They got a running game. They brought in Austin Eckler. They got a great one-two punch in there. They got some offensive linemen, brought in some defensive linemen. So the Cowboys are going to have problems because you're not making any offseason moves. So um, th- this this offseason has been kind of kind of wild and, and to see what's happened so far. I don't even know who the starting running back for the Cowboys is right now. It's Turpin. Devondre Turpin. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it right back in the draft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay, but they, but but guys, think about this. You, I don't know if you saw it either today or yesterday came out. They never called Derrick Henry. Derrick yeah. Derrick Henry actually was looking to go to the Cowboys. He was hoping they called him. 
Yeah. And for what the Ra- what the Ravens got him for, you telling me that the Cowboys wouldn't sign him to a two year deal for what sixteen million, seventeen million? What that's for Derrick Henry? You talk that's peanuts. Yeah. And so for them not even to pick up the phone and call, and you guys don't even y'all didn't even know who was the running back back there. That's yeah. a that's a bad sign. Yeah, and Jerry, what's funny is Jerry Jones at the beginning of the offseason said the Cowboys were all in this year. Yeah. And as you said, Sean, you're right. They haven't done anything. It's a pass they haven't signed lead. one, added one significant They got to save the money for, for Dak well, and Michael Parsons. Okay. It's, and uh, and, 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 and C.D. Lamb. Yeah, C.D. Yeah, Lamb. but who do they got besides C.D. Lamb? Brand, uh, no, uh, Brandon Cooks. Cooks. He's all right, but he's old. <laughs> Sean, what do you think of the uh, Harbaugh signing in, in L.A.? New change of face, change of direction for the Chargers. You know, you know what's crazy about that. Um, you realize how much he moves the needle because the, the excitement of that fan base and organization hasn't been like this. I would say almost until since I played. So, you know, you had Anthony Lynn that was there for what four or five years. You had. Um, you know, uh, Brandon um, Staley, who was there for what, three or so years. I, I don't think they had this le- this level of excitement in a decade. And one thing about Jim Harbaugh, we all know this, is that he comes in and he makes changes right away. Like this is not a rebuilding situation for him because he's had worse programs and worse organizations he came in and done a hell of a job with, and he's done it within a year. And so we know right now him having a franchise quarterback in Justin Herbert, having, you know, uh, they're going to draft a wide receiver. They're going to get, um, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. or neighbors. You know, one, one, they're going to draft one of the two. You know, Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa just re, just restructured their contract and re-signed. Derwin James is still there. So you look at this team and what, what Jim Harbaugh is, walk, is walking into, that, that was a match made in heaven. I don't think it could have went any other way, man. I don't think they could have got another, another coach that was out there. Sean, let's uh, before we let you go, tell us about the fight again. Everybody can watch it on Fubo, of course, right? Tell us about the not just one yeah. fight, but a whole bunch of fights. Great card. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah a whole whole bunch of whole bunch of fights. Uh, Saturday, April sixth, this Saturday, uh, we'll be live on Fubo TV, Fubo Sports, starting at six p.m. Pacific. Um, this is going to be massive, man. I think this is a this is a big big card for a couple reasons. I think we got a couple guys in this card who I think are going to go straight to the UFC. Maybe after this fight, maybe one more fight. Uh, with us, but that this cold cold main event, these last four, uh, last sorry, last five fights on this card are massive. We, you know, we I single handedly kind of stepped in to start helping my matchmaker put some of these guys together, and I think that, um, you know, this is this is the biggest card we've had in the history of the company. Wow. This Saturday, everybody check it out. I'll be watching. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it, Sean. You got it, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll talk to you soon, Sean Merriman. All right, uh, man. This fight, people love the MMA, UFC. MMA, I was going to say it's UFC. But you know what's interesting? I just thought of this. I wish I would realized this earlier. WrestleMania is Saturday night, too, because my oldest is a huge wrestling fan. It's oh, wild really? that they would put two massive cards on the same night like that, going head-to-head. Huh. Well, maybe yeah. it's before. Well, he said six. No, Where actually. is WrestleMania this year? Philly. Oh, okay. Because my oldest Isn't wanted there me big, to send them. Uh, is it SummerSlam, SummerSlam that's going to be clean? Coming here. Yeah. yeah. We, should probably, we should try and have one of the... Yeah, we should get one of the We, we uh, I believe, have The Miz for sure coming on. Uh, okay. Oh, great. And we've reached out to some others. So. Cool. All right. Yeah, there's, there's actually like three guys from Cleveland that are yeah. the Miz. Dolph Ziggler. That, that's the other one. And then uh, Johnny Gargano, I think his name. Never Miller, heard of guy. Uh, go ahead, Mike. All right, one last read. We'll get some super chats and wrap it up here. But a reminder that eBay Motors is now part of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show rotation. Passion, drive, and patience. Is the winning formula for championship. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, you name it. They got it. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, Your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make up your car into the MVP and bring home some huge wins. 
Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Folks, make sure, if you haven't done so already, that you subscribe to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Our goal is to hit 40,000 subscribers by our two-year anniversary on May the 9th. We are roughly 1,000 subscribers away. We have 39,000 subscribers, roughly. We're trying to get to 40,000 here in the next month. Help us get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, if you've been watching the show, please hit the subscribe button. If you know anybody that watches the show ever, tell them to hit the subscribe button. We would appreciate it. By the way, also hit the subscribe button for my podcast, The Bullpen with Adam the Bull. Uh, and you can find that on YouTube as well. And I'll be doing a live show today at 2 p.m. If you haven't had enough of me already, I'll uh, talk a lot about the Guardians and look ahead to the big three-game set with Minnesota, 2 p.m. live on YouTube. Mike. I do not think there's an Ultimate 216 show tonight. So, and shaking his head, yeah, I don't think we're getting a 216 show, but we will have a Ultimate Brown show tomorrow with G. Bush, make sure you tune into that. Also, as always, check out the Ultimate Guardian show on Monday with Bull and Zach. The Ultimate Cab show on Tuesdays with myself and Jason Lloyd. We got one super chat today from our guy Daryl. Said UCSS did it again. Fire. Great show. Love you guys. We appreciate Daryl. And Evan419 gifted five memberships. So shout out to Evan shout for uh, gifting those memberships. McNuggets, I got a question for you. I hopefully have an answer for you, Tyvis. It's, it's for you personally. Okay. Say you, okay, were lighting it up in college basketball, right? Okay. And the NBA was paying chump change, and the big three offered you 4 to $5 million to play in there. Would you do it? Because they offered that to uh, Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Clark. Caitlin Clark, yeah. Would I? That's not a fair comparison because Caitlin yeah, Clark it's... is already getting a lot of money. Mike's not getting Any. a ton of money. So, yeah, I mean – no, I've said if he was in college and he was a, today, modern today. Yeah. And he was a and really good player. he was Caitlin player. Clark? Yes. Would you do it? Like, how much is she going to make in the WNBA? The max salary is 254000 Oh, really? That's it? Yeah. Per year, yeah. That's going to go up when they get their when new they renegotiate TV the, deal. Yeah. But, uh, She's going to make I – was, I was having this conversation with my barber the other day. Yeah. She's going to get nine – not nine, seven to eight figures from Nike or a shoe deal. Like, without a doubt. Right. But if she could make <coughs> playing for the big three. Can she not do both? She could. Ice Cube said she could play in the WNBA and the big three. I, I can't just let five million just sit there. Me personally. You also I, can't take a vacation. So I'm listen, not sure she right wants to do it. She, don't need, uh, she should do what's best for her. I mean, it would be cool. If she how long is the, how many games is the big three season? I don't know. But here's the thing. She's worth any amount of money to the big three because who pays attention to the big three? Nobody. She oh, would. She, dr- she's worth a hundred million. Of that. She would draw attention. People would watch the big three, and nobody watches it. I, I, I tune in every now and again. Right, every now and again. But if she were playing there, people would be locked in. People that like her would be locked in, and people that don't like her would be locked in because they want to see her fail against men. But they got the four point line. I want. I just want to see her pull from the four yeah, point. Where line. is the four point line? It's like half. It's court? like by half court. Yeah. yeah, it's like a little bit above half mm. court. Remember those old MTV rock and jock games? Yeah, the 10-point basket. basket, Yeah, right? it was like 25 feet up or something like that, 20 feet up. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. There was a 10-point shot, but it yeah. was the basket was, it wasn't from that's before your time. It was higher up. Well, like that's, that's where the NBA is headed because we was, I was watching the Cavs game last night, and we was watching the beginning of it, <laughs> and my wife's laying there, and she goes, she said, this ain't nothing but the All-Star weekend. All they do is come down and shoot threes. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, that's blame Steph Curry. That would be interesting. Instead of making the court bigger, just put it higher, yeah. get the rim higher. <laughs> Twelve-foot rim, that's see true. what happens. I'll see what Steph do on that. Let's see if you still like that. How many guys could dunk if the rim was 12 feet? Gerald Green blew out a, a birthday a candle, so. It, 12 feet's a giant step up from 10 feet. Yeah. Like a giant step. Yeah. Anthony Edwards could for sure. Jerry Wemby. Wemby, Wemby, could, Wemby could easily, yeah. Uh, one more thing before we wrap up yeah. here. Deshaun Watson opened his Lefties restaurant today in Cleveland Heights. He opened his what? His, it's called Lefties. It's a cheesesteak spot. In Cleveland Heights today was the grand opening. He did a podcast out there. Kevin Stefanski joined his podcast. Uh, G. Bush and Earl are out there right now, so we oh, they have are. some stuff from the show. And I just got word someone tweeted at us that G. Bush has ordered, quote, this from Brown Spider Cleveland Adventures. 
G Bush up in this piece ordering the whole damn store. <laughs> 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 do, we, do we know if G and Earl got a chance to talk to Deshaun Watson? They haven't tweeted anything yet, so I don't. I mean, they both tweeted they're there, but I haven't seen anything of them tweeting they spoke to him. He did a podcast, so maybe that was his. All right, well, that's a good sign that Kevin Stefanski was there. He was on the podcast. He did a Stefanski podcast. Was on the podcast. He was on Deshaun's podcast. No, I know. I'm saying it's a good sign that he was there. Yeah. Good. That, that's good because you know they don't. I don't think they care for me social media stuff outside. Yeah. Right. I mean, just the fact that Kevin, you know, he supported it. Yeah. I if they that. do get anything from lefties, not food, but like content, we'll obviously run it tomorrow. I want the, <laughs> I want the food. Yeah. Tell Jim Bush to bring G, G, G and Earl. Earl. Anything. He's got I've to had, get, I've had lefty cheesesteaks. He had one in Houston. This is a, ch- I don't know if it's a chain, but there's a couple locations. He yeah. had one in Houston. It's pretty damn good cheesesteak. I'm not even going to pretend. Well, G really and good. Earl need to, G, you owe me some jerk chicken, so i let it go if you decide yeah. to bring me a cheesesteak. Well, he's definitely not watching right now if he's there, but G's it always should be on. In. It should be on. We'll see you in overtime. Peace.